Yes. Okay. So first of all, let me apologize. Uh, it was because of my mistake. Actually, I was supposed to start the class just ten minutes, and I was just blindly waiting. I actually did not know that I had to start the class. So it was not like that before. So apologies from my side for being late. Though I don't normally don't you know uh, make the class late. So anyway. Let's start the class and uh, let me introduce myself. Hello, everyone. My name is Vishal. I am an ACC affiliate. I have scored All India rank at ACC professional level and ACC skill level. I have seven plus years of uh, corporate experience in multinational MNCs. I am currently teaching at uh, VGLD. So, before we start the class, you know, and we just jump into our uh, you know law subject and i just bore you with all the technical terms so before we start all that so you know this is my routine and the way i start the class is first of all have a interaction with each and every student like i just give you this opportunity that because we are studying for the professional level so it's a good channel that we can interact and uh, basically uh, we all can you know uh, network with each other and becoming a acc professional one thing that i will you know give you right away a very good advice is that you should create a, a basically a strong networking i think some of the students are uh, basically someone has uh, are on unmute mode so please kindly note that uh, this is a virtual class, so kindly mute yourself. In case you want to raise any question, just raise your hand and then we'll basically, I'll unmute you. Okay, so I'm just muting it you right now. And everyone, please uh, try to be on mute mode. Okay. So should I start basically naming the student or anybody wants to volunteer? for giving the introduction, please, I would strongly recommend to, you know, introduce yourself to the class. What, what I would basically ask you is just give yourself basically uh, what you are currently studying, why ACCA and what is, if they, if you have any experience, so you can share with that, like any working experience you have, just like I have given you my introduction. So anyone who wants to volunteer or should I start uh, basically telling, uh, basically announcing the name of the student and they will just unmute. And it's not a compulsory thing, though I strongly recommend in my first class. This is something that I usually recommend students because it's a good way. But again, I know there could be people who are shy, so completely fine with me. But I would again recommend. So anyone who wants to volunteer, well, complete silence. Uh, so let me just call out the name of one student. If you're not comfortable, you can just type in your you know introduction. Uh, anyway, I would recommend to unmute yourself. Okay. Like if you want, you know, you want to say something. So just unmute yourself. Uh, just tell that you want to unmute yourself and I'll unmute you and you can basically give yourself introduction. So Anirudh, do you want to start? Sure. Okay. Uh, Anirudh, uh, I hope you are. You can unmute yourself though. I have, you know, unmute. Uh, yeah. Yes, sir. You can hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you now. Yeah, so my name is Anirudh. I am currently doing first year BCom. So I'm okay. still in my first semester, actually. Okay, and nice. Yeah, that's it. And the reason I picked ACA was it actually was my first choice. I wanted to do IFA, but I didn't get IFA in the college I wanted. So I'm doing okay, it okay, like okay. this. Okay, okay, okay. Great, great. Thank you, Anirudh. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay. Arya, do you want to go next? Those students, any um, student who... Yeah, yeah, sure. Please, please go ahead, Arya. Yes, sir. So my name is Arya. Mm -hmm. I'm from Vishakapatnam, basically. Okay. And I have completed my first level uh, mm -hmm. in ACCA. Okay. And I'm okay. also doing uh, my BCom simultaneously. I've completed my first year. Mm -hmm. Now I've stepped into second year. Okay. Uh, and, and also I have actually prepared for the law. I'm already preparing. So I'm mm -hmm. just listening mm -hmm. to the classes for my revision so that I will understand more. Okay, okay. That that's great to know, Arya. Thank you, thank you for the. I feedback. will be. Mm -hmm. I will be attending my exam by the end of this month. Oh, that that's great. Okay. That's great. Uh, th just to give you a quick FII, uh, Arya, to you is that uh we will be going with the speed. So I'm not sure like how much we will be because this is the first month and in the first month we usually cover like 20 to 25 percent of the slavers so in case you get any query you can directly ask to me like you can whatsapp me or you know whatever whichever way you feel right uh, in the class we'll be going with the speed and in the first month uh, i hope you understand that 
the batch is basically two and a half months. So in the first month, you'll be covering like first we will be focusing on the uh, basically fundamentals and covering like 20 to 25 percent of the syllabus. So I hope that meets your expectation, Arya. Okay. Yes, sir. sure, sir. Anything. Okay, okay. Uh, Apurva. Thank you, Arya. Uh, Apurva, do you want to go next? If you are not comfortable, don't worry. You can also type in your basically intro. That's fine. Okay. Uh, Ashna? Hello, sir. sir I'm Hello. from Delhi. I have recently okay. completed the from Hathi Vidya Peace. Currently, I'm doing internship under CA firm. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is the time when I plan to uh, pursue with ACCA. Okay, so you are simultaneously pursuing CA and ACCA? No, no, no. I'm doing okay. internship in CA firm. Okay, okay. So you are doing internship in CA firm, but you are doing ACCA. Yeah, yes. that, that's okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay fine. So uh, Ashna, just one question, because this question is asked to me by students. So in case any student has any doubt. So when you applied for the internship, so did they hire you based on ACCA or did they hire you just uh, basically on a job basis? No, no, like, no. no. Mm -hmm. uh, like uh, this is my other friend firm, so mm -hmm. that, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you, Ashna. Uh, next is Ishika. Uh, am I audible, sir? Yeah, yeah, sure. You are audible. Uh, good evening, sir. So good evening. My name is Ishika. Mm -hmm. I'm from Delhi. Mm -hmm. uh, I've already cleared my two exams mm -hmm. from VGLD. Currently, it's starting MA with VGLD and okay, also starting okay. law. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. in the second year of BCom. Nice, nice, uh, Ishika. Uh, just to clarify, uh, are you clear with your knowledge? I think you are at, uh, you are pursuing MA, so I think you have also claimed certain exemptions. Am I right? No, sir. I have cleared two exams. BT and FA are done. Okay, 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 okay. That's great. Okay, okay. So, so just to give an FYI to everyone, before uh, basically attempting the corporate law and business, you need to complete your BT exam. Before completing BT exam, I hope you are aware that you cannot, you know, appear for corporate and law exam in case any student is not aware. Okay. So, thank you. Thank you, Shika. Thank you, sir. Uh, Jatin. Uh, Jatin, can you hear us? Okay. Kritika, do you want to go next? Yes, sir. Am yeah. I audible? Yeah, yes, you are. Uh, so I'm Kritika Goyal mm -hmm. and I am in BCom first year right now. Mm -hmm. And I'm from Delhi. Okay. I've already clear, uh, cleared BT and FA. And mm -hmm. on the way to clear MA in this December only. Okay. So my best wishes to you, Kritika. Thank you. Sir. And uh, let's see what we can do in the law class. And I, I'm sure that you will be clearing all these exams. Okay. Thank you, Kritika. Uh, Shweta. Hello. Good evening, sir. Good evening, Shweta. Sir, my name is Shweta Jaiswa. I am from mm -hmm. Noida. Mm -hmm. And sir, I have completed my first group IPCC. Okay, <laughs> nice. And then I want to switch in ACCA because it is mm -hmm. very tough for me. Okay, okay. Very interesting so, statement, Shweta. <laughs> Uh, let me tell you, let me just tell you one thing about myself, which I forgot to mention. I have also switched from CA to ACCA. Okay. And uh, this is uh, basically how I basically switched. Like I was at my finals and uh, I actually was, you know, uh, have some issues like uh, some financial issues. And so that's why I had to, you know, adopt for the job. And this was like in ba back in 2017. So my first attempt was June 2017. And uh, the way things were going, like it was my first attempt. And uh, just after the attempt, like, I just gave the papers away. I didn't, you know, prepared for it actually. And then after two days of giving exam, I actually started my first job. So I always wanted to continue with the CA, but uh, it was because of the time that was not matching. 
so the reason for my switch was not because the ca was difficult and uh, just an fii is set up to you uh, acca provides definitely some flexibility but they the preparation level would still be required here so when we say that acca is easy i hope you understand that exam oh. preparation level would not be easy <laughs> it's the flexibility like you can give one exam at a time or basically you can you know do any job at any time or basically uh, the exams are three months this is the flexibility that acc offers in terms of exam preparation i'll be giving you you know an intro to to the entire class it's not to you shweta only but to the entire uh, class that please don't you know underestimate acc the exam preparation requires some time efforts and i hope with consistent effort we will all be able to clear these exams the best part you know the only thing that i see that if a student puts a consistent and you know uh, honest effort from their side you will definitely you know be able to clear it the the only ask from you guys would be <laughs> consistent effort and honest effort i hope that is clear you, okay yes, okay thank, thank you. you shweta and uma hello good evening sir uh, just a second uma uh, yes yes sir purva you can be next sorry i missed your message yeah yeah you can just after the uma you can basically introduce yourself yes uma please go ahead hello sir good evening good evening i'm uma from tamil nadu okay i am a ca final student and mm -hmm. uh, like uh, i'm also switching from ca to accu uh, okay. what is it like uh, flexibility i can write only one exam yeah and, yep, yep. Uh, duration also in 3 months mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. last time i cleared uh, fr paper in mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I, now i want to give a law exam okay okay and that's that's nice to know uh, uh uma so thank you for the uh, basically your introduction and apurva if you want you can go next then i'll just bore you with a speech and then we'll start the class uh, any question uma no sir okay 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 uh, apurva you can go uh, next good evening sir good evening sir i'm apurva grari uh -huh. i'm from pratapgarh and i'm doing bcom second year right now and mm -hmm. doing my third semester exams mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I just cleared my uh, FA and MA, uh, FA and BT exams, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. now I'm preparing for. Uh, I'm now I'm preparing for MA and law. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, nice, nice, Sapurva. Okay, so thank you all. I think Jatin, you are left, but if you want, you can just type in your intro. That's fine. If not, that's that's also fine. Okay, no pressure to one one. So thank you everyone for your feedback and what I understood from this class that the class is you know fresh. What do I mean by that? That you know most of the students had either second year their you know commerce education or you know they just started it. Like some students you know uh, start doing uh, the ACC just after their twelfth class. one uh, one uh, advice from my side uh, is that you know when once you are doing your uh, acc and you are at your college level so many you know students try to find internship and this is the question that i ask you know i get to i get asked by the students a lot of time so this is you know something that i want to share it uh, in the initial stage already that if you are at your college level and you have you know one year two years left of your college life so please complete as many papers as you can during your college life and then you know look after for the internship why i am saying that well because many students you know approach me asking for referral for the job well the tricky part is for you guys would be that at this stage because you don't have any graduation degree because you are right now at college and as well you most of the students are not you know clear with their skill level so first of all it is difficult for you to get you know uh, a proper job you though you can get a internship in ca firm like one student actually mentioned they are right now working in the ca firm that's good but for you it it would be little difficult at this stage unless you only apply for the uh, internship okay in in a ca firm in uh, any multinational company you would be selected only if you have minimum a graduation degree okay so this is the thing that uh, one 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 thing uh, part for this and second part uh, that i personally feel that you should not you know start your internship or your job before completing skill level why because you know if somebody hires you if somebody you know uh, provides you any internship so please understand that person is not doing any social work 
that person is hiring you because you would provide some benefit to them by you know working so definitely they have certain expectations you know you at least serve like 6 hours 9 hours depending on you know how many hours you need to serve and if that happens so please understand your studies might suffer and i don't want especially students before their skill level that they you know suffer their studies because till skill level till skill level you need to you know develop your fundamentals you need to have an understanding of business you need to have understanding of accounts you need to have understanding of you know how this uh, law actually behaves in the business environment you need to have an understanding what audit is so all these aspects you know ecc offers you this flexibility that you know you can uh, start internship or job at any time even before starting acca if you have any prior experience you can claim that experience as your 3 year pr requirement i hope students are aware about it but sometimes students you know because they are fresh level they are very confused at this stage because they see an opportunity if it's a very you know very well established firm or it's a very renowned uh, company so definitely even i would say okay please go for it because it's a one time opportunity but if it's a you know normal job or it's a normal opportunity then i would say please at least complete your skill level i strongly recommend that but definitely choice would be yours it can depend also depend on your financial factor but the entire idea is to at least complete your fundamentals and clear your skill level as soon as possible after college or let's say you have spare time after studying you get so much spare time you feel like 9 to 10 hours gets wasted so you if you feel you can do that but i feel if you have that spare time utilize it to prepare for two papers at least i hope that is clear what my intention of conveying this it's just that you don't you know hamper this just an fii some students do the internship do their you know skill level as well as professional level and complete them but the ask is that that student puts their best that student you know work consistently even with the you know rigorous demanding job like the hours they require they still you know every day at least study for 2 to 3 hours and if you are honest with yourself that okay i can complete that task so i would go for internship so this is one question that i get to ask many times and especially by the you know new students so that is why i just wanted to give you this uh, fii that this is what my understanding of this is okay okay uh, apurva says that she is facing some network issue has anyone else is facing network issue no no okay apurva please check because students are confirming to me that they haven't uh, faced any network issue i hope my audio audio all is clear no glitch okay so let's let's start let's let's let me just bore you with this uh, uh you know the the subject that you know you have not come to me to you know get advices for the internship you have come to me for the studying of the uh law so again i welcome you all guys for the acc classes for corporate and business law and i hope you and un realize that we are right now studying the corporate and business law flow global there are multiple aspects for you know uh, reading the law you are studying acc acc a global examination so what happens that there are certain variations you can also study corporate and business law for england and then there are multiple countries like ireland like other countries also so if you want if you ask somebody who's going to practice in those countries so you should know their country's law otherwise if you are currently in india and right now your only goal is to clear acca so it's good that you study the business law corporate and business law global but let's say if you plan to you know uh, go to ireland or england or basically uk so then you will have to you know learn but let me just tell you one thing that once you clear acc na you will be you know eligible enough to learn those laws by yourself there will not be you know a much hassle for you in case you plan to go outside okay so first thing that this is a corporate and business law for global exam okay so once you will be booking your exam that will be corporate and business law global i have this much understanding is we have okay so let's start i have my screen was vis screen was visible i didn't actually i forgot to ask this yes okay 
Yep. So let me just wear this glove and let's start. Okay. So let's discuss certain thing about this examination. This exam is very interesting actually. You know, this exam is at skill level, but this is the only exam at skill level that is of two hours. So those who have already appeared for, you know, their knowledge level exam, like some students confirm me, they have cleared BT and FR. So like financial reporting. So I hope they understand that uh, their subject was of two hours only. And this corporate and business law is again two hours. In case you have appeared for, you know, any, uh, I think this is not, uh, this is financial accounting. Or was it FR? Because financial uh, FR is at skill level. FR is at skill level of three hours paper. Three hours, 15 minutes to be exact. Yep, 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 yep. So those who have gone through BT and FA, so you are going to get the same exam environment. For those who are appearing for their first exam, this is basically going to be a two hour exam. Okay. The exam is going to be entirely computer based. Okay. I hope we all are aware about it. Any student who was not aware that this is a computer based exam. Yes. Any student? Do I need to clarify this? All good. Okay. This is going to be an interactive session. It's not like I'm going to, you know, just keep uh, giving a speech and you will be just listening and then you'll fall asleep. No, this is going to be an interactive session. Okay. So I need you to, you know, uh, just keep uh, pouring your answers in the chat. Okay. So this is a computer-based exam. I hope everyone is aware that ACCA conducts the uh, computer-based exam. Either you can give the exam from your home or you can go register a center and then basically give their, your exam there on computer. So it will be a computer-based exam. Okay. The exam will be 100 marks. The exam will be 100 marks paper. Okay. All questions are compulsory. I don't think I need to write that. And this exam will be checked by the computer. So when I say it will be checked by the computer, I hope you have understood that it would be basically uh, option selection. Like we know this as a MCQ based, but in ACCA we, uh, you know, multi-choice question, also multi-responsive question, okay? Multiple case studies, okay? So it will be a hundred marks question based on CB and it will be checked by the, uh, you know, computer marking. So if you book your, you know, register, you, you register yourself in a center. So I, what I am aware is that you get the result on the same day or maybe by next day. Okay. Some student is on mute and, uh, kindly just mute yourself guys. Okay. Okay. I understand this can happen. This can happen by accident, but please understand this is a, the, we have a touch screen phone. So, or maybe a computer system. So might get, you know, little sensitive to this. It's very little touchy. Okay. So what I was saying, this is a hundred marks exam and how much you need to, uh, how much you need to score is 50%. But I hope after taking classes, your target is not 50%. At least I can expect you that. Okay, with good preparation and good effort, definitely uh, you will be able to score more marks than this. All options look same in MCQs, Kritika says. <laughs> well, Kritika, it won't, it won't look anymore. If, if you are, you know, prepared enough, so I hope you, it will not feel like this. Okay, just, just, a, just a, you know, uh, a secret reveal. If you want to score more than 50 marks, so, the revelation is that you need to practice questions and concepts. Student asked me this question. Okay. So uh, Vishal, we have, you know, completed the uh, practice kit one or two time, but uh, now we want more to do more questions. Well, I always say do not, you know, go after too many questions because in exam, please understand that questions will always be new. Okay. No matter how many questions you practice, if you complete BPE book or basically, you know, Kaplan book, which we are, I'm just going to discuss those who don't know, don't worry. So whether you complete BPP book or Kaplan book, you will be required to, you know, even if you complete all their questions, you would still be facing a question in the exam that will be new to you. And how would you tackle that? Because you will have a, uh, concept clarity. If you don't have the concept clarity, so no matter how many questions you do, it would be relevant. 
And how do you get the conceptuality is by practicing questions. Which I'll are into contradicting yourself. Well, I'll explain when we'll be learning now. I'll explain this. Just understand if you want to, you know, ensure that you clear your exam, you have to, you know, attempt as many questions as possible and especially focus on those areas, those area which you feel are weak. Okay. Okay. Uh, just, just one thing, uh, please don't mind my bad writing. <laughs> I have to use this stylus. So my writing doesn't come, you know, very good. It's, it's very difficult to write on this. <laughs> Okay, so I understand that, sir. <laughs> Thank you, Arya. Okay, you know, you know, uh, just to just to tell you, Arya, just to you know, boost your confidence. There is a study that says you know those student those students who you know write very fast because they have lot of thinking. They are thinking a lot and they are you know uh, have multiple thoughts or they are you know kind of a genius. That's why their writing is bad. So just think, maybe your writing is not bad because you have a poor handwriting. Maybe because you're a genius, Arya. <laughs> okay, bad joke. <laughs> okay, now coming back to this, coming back to this, please understand there are there will be two sections. Section A and Section B. Section A would be consisting of 45 questions. Okay. 20 question of one mark each and 25 question of two marks each. Section A would be sufficient enough for you to clear your exam. And the, you know why, why a question would be two marks because there will be little trick. So, so, so these 20 objective type question, which are of one mark would be basically based on your knowledge would be basically based on your knowledge. Let's say I, I let me just tell, uh, ask you, let's say, what is the capital formation? How do we issue debentures? What forms are required? What type of approval of required of board of directors? Okay, we have to, you know, exchange goods between, you know, two countries. What is bill of lading? So these kind of questions and you will have to select the right option based on your knowledge. Don't worry. I have not taught anything. So don't worry about this. Like what sir, what Vishal is saying right now, these are some jargon words, but they, they won't be jargon just after we clear those concepts. Okay. But we have to wait for a couple of classes for that. But the idea is that if you want to, you know, uh, score high. So first of all, focus on the weak area of the exam and 20 marks of uh, basically one mark question. Basically those 20 questions will be the most soft questions. Like if you are through with your slavers, you know, everything you'll be able to score these 20 marks, at least 17 to 18 marks. You'll be able to score unless you know, make any mistake, but 70 to 18 marks out of this 20 would be easy. And then rest is 32 marks. And these two marks now, these two marks are, you know, kind of a pain area for students because it's not that students don't know the concepts. It's because they get tricked by the questions. And it, you know, I, I cannot say how much it, you know, disappoints or, you know, frustrates me that student is, you know, have prepared themselves well. Like they have, you know, they are very good at, you know, answering questions in the class. But because they failed to, you know, practice questions or because of the overconfidence, I don't know that, you know, they were feeling like, okay, I have a grip. So they fail to, you know, understand how exams are conducted. And, and because of that, they fail to practice. They did not practice much questions. And because of that, they got tricked. And you would find that these tricks would be so silly that you'd be tempted to select an option that would be, you know, uh, not correct, but seems to be correct. And this is where your concept clarity would come play. Okay. So in this questions, you need concepts clarity. Okay. Now this 30 marks question, this is section B. So there would be five questions. There'd be basically five case study per se. I, I would say five case study. And based on those case study, you'd be, you know, uh, uh, selecting option. This would be again a selection option. There, nothing you have to write in the exam. You have to write nothing. Okay. So don't worry about that. Just a second. I'm just okay. So you don't have to worry about writing anything. It's a computer based exam where you would be, you know, submitting your response. Nothing needs to be written. Okay. I hope this is clear. Nothing needs to be written here. Okay. Some students are joining just now. 
Uh, uh, uh. Okay, but again, this will be a little tricky area. This will be again a little tricky area. So I hope we will be ready for this. Okay, so I hope you understand that this exam is a on demand. This is on demand. Why I'm writing this is already given here. It's on demand. Basically, you can decide when you are ready. It's a very big advantage. As the same time, it's a very bad advantage. Basically, it becomes disadvantages to students. Or I would say student make it disadvantages. Like you can decide whenever you are ready and you can appear for the exam. So there is no deadline for you to prepare for your exam. But this is actually, you know, two-edged sword. Because there is no deadline, so when student will be ready by for their you know exam preparation is a very you know mystery. Students feel okay. I would be you know targeting to you know complete my syllabus by let's say one month, and uh, what they do is like you know they defer it. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure, Uma, sure, 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 sure. Just a second, huh? Let me check. Let me check. Uh, just, guys, just wait, wait a minute. Some students are facing some issues. Okay, just two minutes. Okay, some students were waiting. Uh, I can't see though. No student seems to be on you know, waiting list. Mm. I think Vipul, uh, Vipul, you are there, na? I think you were the messaging and I think there was Shabaj. I think Shabaj and Vipul, both of you are in the class, right? Okay, okay, okay. Uh, I hope you guys can see my screen again. Is it visible? Please confirm yes or no. Yes, okay, yes, okay, thank you. So you would be giving basically global variant. This class is for global exam, like business global, this global, because there are multiple variants. There's an English variant which many students, you know, appear for, because if you want to, you know, uh, uh, want to move to UK and you want to study for that law, so that is fine. But in case, you know, you are not right now planning or you are not sure what would you do in the future. So right now we are going with the slavers for the global, okay? And there are other versions. I hope that is clear. And these are on demand exam. So you would be, you know, deciding what date, like if I want, I can register myself. And then basically after registering, I can decide, okay, what date I want to, you know, appear for the exam. So this is the flexibility only for knowledge level and this uh, corporate law. After that, you would be, you know, switching to the quarter papers. Like after that, this facility is only available for knowledge level and corporate, uh, corporate and business law exam. After that, you would switch to quarter exams. Like once you start preparing for the rest of the skill level or professional level, you can only give exam on quarter basis and the date would be decided by ACA, not you. So this, you can decide the date. Okay. You can decide the date of your exam. But please understand, I would strongly recommend as soon as this badge gets completed, like my plan is let's say december january february by february max we would be completing this by mid of february we would be completing this labels okay so my strong recommendation is that after batch gets completed like mid of the uh, mid of the february or let's say uh, at the end of the february you should be able to either give your exam within two to three weeks or let's say max to max one month do not take more than time that unless there is a specific thing because Trust me, you would forget things. I hope you realize we have a memory and we don't have a CPU memory. Like we don't have a hard disk, you know, stored in our mind that we can, you know, uh, access these things anytime. Okay. You will forget things if you don't revise. And it's not, you know, a good practice to revise multiple times when you are already good at it. The moment you feel confident about your preparation, just give the exam. And that my recommendation would be somewhere between March. Okay, please don't defer that. 
but i know students would be you know doing their own uh, kind of planning and that is fine but my uh, basically uh, message from this is that please 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 do not you know defer your preparation if you have set it a, a date in your mind like i would be you know giving my exam by this date just because you were not preparing just because you were not preparing for the exam and that's why you have to defer the date that would be most uh, you know uh, terrifying thing you could do so please be consistent with me whatever homework i give you you complete it and the best part would be if you get any query you can you get to ask me live in the class okay i hope this part is clear so please this is my strong recommendation that complete the homework which i give you but i know how students you know react so that's why you know it's my duty to you know inform you yeah sure arya that's up to you that's up to you you want you can access these classes for knowledge based you want you can basically discontinue these classes if you have you know further exams coming in and you want to prepare for that so that's better that you utilize that okay the classes access is available to you one and one year two year whatever that is you know you can discuss with vg team but you don't need to you know you use this class if you are preparing for further exams utilize that time somewhere else okay arya okay two books now these are two books i was uh, basically referring workbook and practice kit so you can you know this is the question that I, again i get and you know i am i am i haven't started the class yet for the subject i haven't started the chapter why i am discussing these these are the most frequent questions so i hope you guys are okay me discussing these points i can directly jump to the chapter but i hope you guys are comfortable me discussing these things because these are the questions you get anyway so that's why i'm taking you know first 5 30 to 50 15 minutes to you know understand this okay any i hope you guys are okay fine with this everyone yes kitika says yes but what about rest arya says yes okay vipul yeah okay okay so the idea is the idea is that you know you have two books bpp kaplan and one author i don't remember so these are the approved partners that have you know published the books for you know acc exams so you can opt for any one okay if you go from the vg team they would offer you for bpp if you want you can also buy kaplan from the market and then there is a acc learning hub how many of you are aware about it so okay good kritika okay so so please understand you can opt for any book you would get a workbook and a practice kit workbook would contain the concept practice kit would contain the questions so you can opt for any one and then there is acca learning hub this also provide you study material as well as you know questions but my recommendation is my recommendation is go with acca learning hub as a complementary as a complementary source of study do not substitute it with your practice do not substitute with your books okay acca themselves have you know given this instruction that you should use this acca learning hub as a complementary okay they they though the portal is very good i have i have you know used it myself and it is very good but if you want i can share uh, show it in the class okay if you want i can show it live in the class how to you know access the acc learning hub let me know how many students want it based on the number of responses i would either show it uh, i would show it either after the class or before uh, currently let me know how many students ashna says yes Sh shabaz says yes what about rest arya says yes ishika says yes so four yeses just two more and i would yeah apurva after okay anirudh says yes okay jatin says yes okay okay so majority of the students who are replying have said that they want the they want to see the accca uh, learning hub so let me show you okay uh, apurva basically majority of the students have said so i'll i'll be showing it right now okay hope that is fine so i'll just open the screen so i am going to you know share my screen on the web browser let me know if you can see it let me know if you can see it 
Okay. Is it visible? The browser screen I'm at right now, Google. Okay. So what you would do, you would go to uh, basically browser. And what you would type, you would type ACCA global. Okay. And what would happen after typing ACCA global, you would basically click on here. And this is the ACCA website. I hope every each one of you have, you know, gone through this website. Okay. This is the website and the most important section for you is this one, my ACCA as well as this student section. So I'll be just covering quickly both of these sessions. So if you want to basically access the ACCA learning hub, go click on my ACCA. Okay. After clicking on, on my ACCA, what you would basically get a portal here, you would be getting in, uh, basically a prompt, like, you know, you do your login in Instagram, Facebook, everywhere, social uh, media account. So this is similar to that. So you just click on your, you know, AID, basically what is your ACC AID and then type in your password. And once you are through with your password, it will allow you login. Okay. So once you are, you know, logged in, so this is a kind of, you know, uh, page you get you in case you have any payments left. So this is actually saying me that I have to pay my annual subscription fee. And this is actually tell me that they welcome me. So what which section you need to, you know, focus on, just go to my qualification. And in this, my qualification, what would happen? you can see that this qualification actually, you know, tells you about everything. Like I have completed my PR requirement. I have also completed my all exams. So you can see the circle is completely red. So here, here you can find the ACC study hub. Okay. First of all, tell me, how does it feel like 13 out of 13? So, so this circle is going to be soon yours. This circle is going to be soon yours. Okay. Just, just keep on believing, keep on, you know, working. Okay. So just click here. Okay. I hope you can see this ACC study hub. Okay. This ACC study hub. This is a very, very important tool guys. You can see there's a CB practice platform. I'm going to discuss this ACC study hub mitigation circumstances. These are very, very important tools. And you are supposed to know this because this will help you in the exam. So ACC study hub, you click. <clears throat> Once you click the study uh, hub, so it will give you a, again a different portal and you can already see, you know, I have gone through audit assurance and then, you know, uh, basically corporate and business law for global. So actually I wanted to show you, you can select for, you know, multiple pages, but right now I have selected the global. So it would directly open me for the global one. So let's me, you know, start studying that. Okay. So I have directly jumped to the corporate and business subject, but you know, you can see, I can, you know, jump to any subject I want. All the subjects that you are going to study are here at ACCA portal. Okay. So we are going to start with corporate and business law. And you can see that once I'm selecting the corporate and business law, there are other variants of it. Like, let me see just a second. Huh? Corporate and business law, English, Again, let me see. Okay. I think the other variants are not coming, but corporate and business law for English and corporate and business law for global. So please select this exam. This is applicable for September to August exam that we are right now targeting. So here you can see that they have, you know, given this, uh, table of content and let me just start with this. This is a copyright about the study stack, examinable documents, labels, and study guide. I'll just jump here. So. If you want to see what is the slavers, so they have, you know, given all this content, but I don't think that you need to go through all this. What you can do is just buy the book and you can see the study content of this. And please, please, please. This is the question. The students also ask me that whether they can use the previous year's books. Okay. Please understand you are right now studying for ACCA. This is a professional exam. At least, at least. The, the book, I know books are costly. I understand. But if you are preparing for this exam, please be willing to, you know, not spend, but invest, invest your money in those books. This is going to be crucial. 
I don't want just because you know you pre you prepared from the last year's books, and you know because that book did not contain even one or two pages concepts, even one or two pages concepts, and just because of that, you you know in the exam you face a scenario where you know you get to a question that you know uh, you were not clear with, and because of that you lose confidence and it impacts your other questions. So those amount that you are going to you know invest in your books that will be crucial. So try to you know you know study from the latest book at least the practice kit at least the practice kit should be you know latest okay you can use the previous books because changes are not that significant but please use the latest practice kit and please don't come with me with this question again okay can i use the previous year's book i hope you understand my intentions that you study from the latest version that is the best okay that is the best approach. But let's say if you don't want to, you know, uh, spend that much money, try at least buy the latest practice kit. Or at least if you have a friend who have the latest practice kit, try to, you know, copy paste, uh, basically Photoshop, uh, photo straight their book. But try to read from the latest book. That would be the best thing. Okay, next thing. Now, once you, you know, go through this, you know, they start, you know, telling you about uh, what is the chapter. After the table of content, they start telling you, okay, what they are going to do. And for each, each, each page, you can basically tell, okay, how much confidence you are feeling. And once you are through with this chapter, now there would be a summary of pages where you feel confident, medium, high or low. And in time of revision, you can come back to those pages where you felt, you know, medium confident or basically low confident, where you were not clear with the terminologies or where you were not clear with the, uh, you know, uh, uh, the concepts. So after preparation, you can come back and, you know, you can just uh, again rate it high for those areas which were weak. Okay. And you can also highlight them. You can also, you know, discuss any point. So this is complete. Uh, complete it's a complete set of books like you have you want you can also prepare from that but my advice would be use it as a complementary not a substitute because this is what acc has said themselves in their instructions for using these kits okay rest is up to you if you find that this is sufficient you can prepare but this would be your call okay and after completing the chapter like this is telling us a lot of about you know world trade organizations ica wto we are going to study it maybe in next class, but not worry. After this, oh, I'm just, you would basically be able after, you know, uh, the chapter, there would be a summary and then there would be a quiz. You can take the quiz and basically see what, how many answers you were able to correct. And the quiz questions are good. Okay. Please understand this is just introduced this year. So students, you know, come up with me and then, you know, they ask me certain questions that is not, you know, conceptually correct. So I tell them that the answer they have thought is correct. It's just that the answer that is given in the quiz may not be 100% correct. Okay, so in case you get any confusion in any question, you can always approach me and ask me the question and I'll guide you. Okay, so this was your ACCA study hub. It's a very good tool if you want to, you know, use uh, online methods. So this is again a very good tool for you. Okay, clear everyone about ACCA study hub. Any questions? Clear? ACC study hub, we are through. Just a sec. Okay. Now, another important tool that I want you want to introduce to you. Another very important tool that I want to introduce to you. This is your CB practice platform. Please utilize this practice platform. Maybe not at corporate level, uh, maybe not at, you know, uh, this uh, two hours exam, but when you, you know, come back to your uh, skill level, please utilize this uh, as much as you can. Because how you are going to, you know, no matter how good you, you are at, you know, understanding the concept, no matter how good you are at, you know, uh, explaining yourself, but it would not be it would be of no use if you are not able to you know handle the system what do i mean by that i'm not sure like how many of you have you know heard from your seniors who have given the exam that they have faced significant issues when you know they were uh, giving the exam either on the system were not comfortable the keyboard was not comfortable or you know that 
they were not able to you know handle the speed that was required they were not able to complete their exam so those students who are going to appear for the skill exam i can't say for the you know knowledge level and this corporate and business law because here the the number of exams the number of mock tests is not sufficient but for rest of the exams it is very uh, so many uh, like you can see that corporate and business law is not here at least not on not on my page okay but this is a very important tool that i wanted to introduce to you that for your skill level and professional level this will be like you know a, one of the most important one of the most important tool for your studies okay okay yeah it was immensely helpful i i, I hope yeah 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 that that's that's actually a very good uh, feedback oma because it actually helps it actually helps you prepare for the uh, you know those students who come from ca background you know what problem they face is that they are not you know familiar with the acca exams the syllabus the content will be same many ca students believe that the syllabus and content are same and i also believe that but the problem comes with the examination the exam preparation you do for the ca is different from the exam preparation you do for acca these are two different sets of exam having same syllabus you may ask okay what is different the exam pattern exam pattern is completely different in acca you would mostly get uh, you know the no, uh, basically case study based questions okay your knowledge will be tested basically how you can apply the scenarios they would not ask you questions on your general knowledge after you apply after your knowledge level this exam is knowledge based but at your skill level you, they, you would not be asked you know basically what is uh, what is the set of accounting what is the meaning of this no they would ask you scenarios they would give you scenario let's say you are working with your manager and suddenly your manager has given you scenario just tackle that situation this is the kind of thing you would be facing in your skill and professional level so be prepared for that so it's a very good tool it's a very good tool okay so this is it and then one mitigation circumstances this is something we'll discuss later because we have to start the class also but i hope you got the clarity like using these important tools okay i hope this was helpful this was informative for you okay i will i will see i will see for you whether you can you know give any mock exam on uh, you know on any i i i remember something like there was some you know uh, uh basically a specimen test which is available and also some paid versions are also available for you but i will try to see whether i can find any free version there there is a uh, free version for you know exam uh that i will try to find for you okay and we'll have a mock test in the class itself okay so we have covered the acca learning hub okay cb practice platform i will try to see whether we can find any specimen exam this is which is free okay this is free and uh, there is another paid version if you want you can give a mock test basically but you have to pay something for it like some somewhat around like 10 to 15 pound so somewhat cost around let's say 300 or let's say 500 plus so i'll see whether it's available for free okay acca technical articles uh, basically you know the subject you are referring so acca provides you some technical articles let me just quickly show you that also okay i'm back to my this acca globe page i hope this is visible just 5 more minutes and we'll start the class 5 more minutes guys please okay sorry ha huh? just 5 more minutes because these are important things i want you to know this i don't want you know you just go to a friend and then you get to know okay this facility was available to you and you just you just you know get disappointed that why somebody not told uh, told me because nobody told me these things i got to know by myself and these were very useful for me during my preparation so that's why i am you know sharing it with you so once you are you know uh, i hope my screen is visible for this acca global page is this visible okay just go to the student section just go to the student section and this is your state uh, study support resource okay study support resource this is the same website you would use to book your exam but 
okay logging into my acca booking your exam you can do the booking your exam here and at this side you would come at student section and study support resource and here you would click acca qualification and here corporate and business law and you can see that there is a section that is called technical article there is a section that is called uh, you know cb pass practice okay okay specimen exams is here okay so you can give the mock exam the specimen exams here these these practice test uh, mock exam will be paid one these practice test mock exam will be paid one this one will be free this one will be free this one will be paid okay so two important sections here technical articles and cb uh, or and 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 and, and. Past exams. Past exams are here. Where is the examiner report? Examiner report is not here. I'm surprised. Okay. So, technical article. So, you will click on this technical article. And in this technical article, you would find very important articles. Why these articles are important? Because these articles are written by an ACCA. Okay, just like me and ACCA who, you know, works for the ACCA, uh, this ACC organization, they have prepared this article for yours to read. That would enhance your knowledge. Okay, though, in case you want to, you know, get a clarity about a concept, you are confused with any concept. Okay, and let's say you want to get a clarity. Let's say you want to ask me or you want, you know, do more research around it. So you can come here and see whether that article is available. If the article is available now, I would definitely say, please go with it. Please go and read this because that would give you practical insights, practical insights. This is, you know, written by somebody who have, you know, practical knowledge about this subject. So they have given these articles and this is for your student at this skill level and professional level. I, you know, mandate students at, at your skill, at your, you know, knowledge level and corporate and business law. I recommend them. But at skill level and professional level, I mandate students to go through this. Okay, because exams questions come from this, uh, in these from these article to promote this article. Now, what ACCA does is that you know they give questions from this article, and you know those students who have prepared for this article in a skill level and professional level, they you know uh, get free marks because they have already prepared this article, and questions come from this article, and they are you know easily able to handle the questions. And one of the reasons that I scored the rank. So at technical and professional level, level, definitely it will be, you know, exam oriented at corporate and business law uh, subject or basically at your apply, basically knowledge level. These are informatory, but again, a very good article. Okay. So I would recommend you to go through this, but in case you don't get time, fine, but skill level and professional level, I want you to complete this. Don't leave any article for the subject you are appearing. Okay. Mind you. In case you want to score good marks, not only pass, but score good marks, you have to go through these articles. This is a must. Okay. Okay. So examiner's report, though it is not here, I'll try to see where is the examiner report for law. I'm surprised I didn't see it. Okay. Now you can book your, basically this, I think I've already covered that you can give your exam based on your, you know, center based on your center, or you can give exam from home. Like there's a term work from home. So, uh, exam from home. Okay. These are exam from home Th though. The requirement would be very tough. The requirement would be very tough. Like you need to have a closed room and, uh, you know, the, there would be a camera, no sound should come. Like there would be very strict requirement and some students have a good experience. Some students have bad experience. So which type of exam you are going to give it would, it is up to you. So please decide very cautiously. My, my experience is let me tell you before you ask me, I have always given center based because on the exam day, I don't want to get into the hassle of, you know, managing the system. I just want to concentrate on my computer. I don't want to manage on anything because that would, you know, distract me. And I don't want to that happen to, you know, just think about the panic uh, that would happen to me if my internet does stop working. But again, center-based exam has certain disadvantages. You may not, you know, find their keyboard very comfortable. You may not find their system very comfortable. So choose according to your, you know, uh, comfort level.
okay on exam day you should be comfortable because even tiny things you know irritates you a lot because you are already under the pressure so when you are for the when you are choosing your exam so be very cautious about it okay so exam tips once we are doing this labels one we are doing this labels and basically we are through with this labels i'll be throwing with you exam tips throughout okay so that is it from me <laughs> so sorry to bore you for like uh, last 45 minutes so i hope some of you might have found certain information which was useful for you and some of you are already aware about it and you are just waiting eagerly for you know class to get started so for those apologies from my side but for you know students who got you know help from this so really care about it okay okay because you know when i prepared nobody actually you know informed me and you know i had to struggle a lot but these are the things that you know help me so i believe these things will help you so that is the only cause okay so now let's start or do you want to take 5 minutes break before we start because i know this might have just hit it up your brain just a 5 minutes quick break should should i start Five minutes, okay. Five minutes, just five minutes. Just you know, just little bit. Uh, just roam around and you know, have your water, be hydrated, and then we'll just start. Just a five-minute break. This is your first class, so I don't want to be so tough on you. Okay, okay. Five minutes break, guys. Okay. What is the time? It's uh seven ten. So let's meet at seven fifteen. Okay. Guys, hello. Are we back? Yes. Okay. So let's start our class now. Now we are supposed to study corporate and business law. This is your chapter number one. But let me just introduce you to the syllabus. What is the syllabus? the syllabus basically requires you to have an understanding of what is the essential element of legal system we'll be learning legal system please understand we are learning for the global so we will be learning generic laws okay not any country specific law okay that is something that we will avoid we would learn basically generic laws which generic laws us first we will understand what are the elements of legal system like let's say what is you know judiciary what is legislation what is basically executive anyone who knows these foundation word those who don't know no worries these are something that i will be teaching you okay what is basically common law apurva just a second i think students are struggling to you know uh let me see because i don't want to get the message so please repeat okay i hope everyone is joined yep so what is common law what is civil law okay what is international law what is a national law okay how international transaction gets executed and what is the role of law in that you know basically people let's say one is sitting in uk one is sitting in india okay so in this case how these two people like person living in india will be you know the law of india will be applicable on that person okay person you know living in uk will have the law of uk applicable on them so if these two parties want to you know transact with each other cross border okay so how do we you know make sure let's say let me just give you a quick uh, you know uh, example like let like this person sends the goods and this person buys the goods okay so for buyer this is a seller and this is a buyer so for buyer they will be paying money okay and they will be sending goods so just think about from these two persons point of view that this person has a fear that they can lose the money and they do not get the goods 
and this person have a fear that they will send the goods and they will not receive the payment okay how do they you know interact with each other because indian laws don't apply to the uk citizens uk laws don't apply to the indian citizens okay how do you do that so this is something we will be understanding international business and how international business basically uh, the law what kind of you know law is applicable in them because have you any have you heard of any term like global law like is there any global universal law that is bound by hello i think somebody is on unmute mode please guys uh, please uh, try to you know uh, mute yourself because this somehow breaks the you know root uh, the flow so what i was saying is that two people with two different jurisdiction with two different laws applicable to them how do they interact and in that sense we will understand you know some uh, global law whether there is any whether there is any such thing as you know global law okay whether there is any international law we will understand certain international organization like un icc okay arbitral uh, like arbitral courts okay international arbitral courts okay we will discuss some fantastic case studies like amazon versus reliance do you know that oh uh, no amazon versus future retail which was actually amazon versus reliance we would understand famous case of you know vodafone hutch take over versus indian government okay these are certain examples i would be giving you we'll try to make the class more practical no worries no worries are you unicentral yeah 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 i i i because you 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 understand these terms very good are you unicentral un central basically you can name it any any way un central basically united nations uh, commission of international uh, transactions we would you know understand the basics of you know how formation and institution of business organization like partnership partnership i'm just giving you a, a hint don't worry we are not uh, partnerships okay companies and once we start this subject of company so in this labels we'll be majorly covering companies act 2006 of uk okay we'll be taking this as an example throughout this labels your books have used this as an example so we'll be continuing that we will be studying this companies act from the point of view of uk okay so from this like from chapter number 7 onwards okay uh, let me just break it down to you from chapter number 1 to 6 of your bpp book we'll be studying basically these international elements like uh, global organizations global laws okay un iac international uh, education code uh, arbitration code or basically you know what is judicial legislation executive all this thing about the basic elements and basically transition related to import export if i just summarize first six chapter would be you know dedicated on this then we would cover the agency and from that agency we would be you know from chapter number 17 from chapter number 7 to chapter number 20 we would be covering this partnership companies and in company we would be covering you know how to raise capital how to raise debentures what forms we would be you know submitting what would be management administration audit requirement what would be you know company secretary's role in case company gets you know any insolvency issue and then you know you know what would be the role of companies directors uh, basically preventing the you know fraud transactions okay i'm not sure how many of you heard about money laundering okay so we would be you know covering this so your syllabus of corporate and business law you know covers into two sections majorly one is understanding the international law which is this and second portion is this which is basically you know about understanding the business organization understanding partnership organization understanding companies and once we you know start company chapter then it would be a very detailed chapter like from chapter number 9 if i remember correctly to chapter number 20 or chapter number 19 the entire discussion is all on company and you know companies insolvency all that stuff and some some little part about the uh, money laundering or fraud okay
So those who are not aware about these things, don't worry. That is why I'm here. I am here to help you understand these things. If you are taking this class, let me just, you know, clear these things from your mind. If you are taking this class, doesn't mean that just taking this class is sufficient. I hope you realize that you need to continuously practice with me. Okay. Whatever chapter I teach you, you just go and basically, you know, start reading them by yourself and start learning. Okay. Whether there is any doubt, you come back next class. You ask me questions. I give you homework. You practice those. You come back and ask me questions. If you follow these steps, definitely there is no doubt that you would not, you would basically guaranteed pass these exams. But let's say if you slack, which most of the students are going to do, no matter how many times I tell them. And, you know, they differ, okay, because it's an on-demand exam. So I will be, you know, uh, preparing according to my own speed. Please understand, these are the things that stops you. ACCA is a flexible exam, but doesn't mean it's an easy exam. Be clear on this on your first day, okay? Those who have a slacky attitude will face the consequences. And personally, as a teacher, as somebody who has struggled in their career themselves, and then basically, you know, switch to the ACCA, I don't want you to struggle in this, uh, in this career. There is a, you know, a very bright side. If you clear these exams, that will be waiting for you. But for that, you have to clear these exams. So with this, I think the enough motivation is done. And we'll starting our first chapter. Okay. Chapter number one. So I'll be, you know, following the BPP book. You want, you can uh, continue with the Kaplan book. So my notes are basically based on BPP and Kaplan, but majorly the chapter format I have, you know, uh, used for the uh, the BPP. Okay, there are 19 chapters. So there'll be 19 chapter slides. Okay. So first task is essential element of legal system. What is a legal system? Can anyone uh, explain? Arya, you can basically help me understand the legal system if you are comfortable and rest of the students also please try and tell me what is your understanding of legal system. Let's start. Okay. The first slide is here. Do not look on this slide. Give me your answer. I want to see what is your understanding. And it says set of rules and regulation. Good point, Anurudh. Sets of rules and regulation which binds the society. Okay, more clearer definition, people. Very good. System enforced by the law. Okay, so Kritika, my follow-up question is, what is law? Though answer is, you know, technically correct. But I just want to understand whether you understand your answer. So what is law, Kritika? Official rule of a country. Okay, okay, okay. Good answer. I, I understand your intention. Okay, okay, okay. Legal system is something which helps to run the economy. Mm, well, it can also help to run the society as well, Arya, not only economy. There are rules, you know, let's say Hindu undivided family or based, let's say the Sharia law, which we are, I hope you realize that we, this is part of the slaver. So this not only helps to run the economy, but also the uh, functioning of the society. Yep. Okay. So a couple of students have given answer. What about the rest? Like, guys, try to give the answer. It's not mandatory, but it's always encouraging. Okay. Okay. So, before I start, what is the legal system? Let me just, you know, give you a brief. Generally, when we talk about legal system, there are three categories of system. One is common law. One is civil law. One is Sharia law. We will be discussing them in detail, but I just want to, you know, go through one category and then we'll, you know, I, I'll just first, you know, build the blocks and then we'll basically, we'll conclude everything. So for this first 10 to 15 minutes, we'll be just building the blocks. Okay. So common law 
just you know this is the most confusing for the students what is law we have not discussed but i'm just telling you what is the category right now common law is basically basically the decisions this is in simple language okay decisions of court in past and in law terminology we say precedents okay so common law is something that is derived derived from the decision of a court what is that how that gets into play i have not discussed it yet just to you know keep this in your mind just to keep this in your mind there is a term which is called precedent precedent means the decision of you know uh, court which uh, which have been you know occurred in past so courts decided something and that has become the law so this is basically the common law civil law something that is codified here the role of the law, role of the court is role of the court is is basically uh, applying the law we will discuss this don't worry don't worry i'm just you know fitting in small small pieces in your mind we'll be drawing a big picture but right now just let me place it okay sharia law this is this one is very easy this one basically law based on islam religion okay so this is the category of legal system this is common law civil law and this is sharia law okay now i just told you this you just keep it in your mind and let's move to the next concept vishal what is this well something that i have planted in your mind and i'll be using it later on okay just you know go with my approach just for over 5 to 10 minutes okay so common law decision of the court which have done in the which are in you know, the past okay civil law which are codified like constitution like constitution constitution and law and sharia law is basically law based on islam religion okay so these are the three categories now let's jump to the next point well i didn't get it vishal basically you just informed us this was like just an information nothing much to do yep that is the intention so economic system let's first of all understand economy before you know understanding the economy and even arya just pointed out this that uh, law is something that you know helps to run the economy so before we understand what is law let's first understand what is economy yeah i'll i'll uh, i'll i'll explain uh, people codification means basically writing it down writing it down when once we say codification it means writing it down i have intentionally not explained anything i have just given you words sir certain words just for the purpose it gets into your memory because i'll be explaining them in later on okay this is intentional don't worry codification in case anybody is confused this is a english word for writing writing the law okay there is a law that is you know verbally that there is a law that is written so it is a written law okay so let's understand economy can anyone tell me what is an economy without looking at slide okay i'm not asking you to read the slide i'm just asking you what do you understand by economy guys what do you understand by economy we shall we are supposed to learn the uh, law well we are supposed to learn the corporate and business law okay state of any country may be economy this is definition of economy basically i think i think what you mean by state is you know the country's current financial position i think that is what you meant arya you did not use the words but i think that was your intention okay what about us clash i think what you say and you know, this cash flow i think it just uh, it, it got wrote, written as clash so cash flow of the country okay production okay critical says production distribution and consumption of goods and services very good
Any other answer? Structure which facilitates exchange of commodities. A very technical definition, but a very good definition, Shabaj. So if there's an exchange of commodities, so that basically formulates an economy. Whether barter economy or you know cash economy, that, that doesn't matter, but that is an economy. Okay, good one. Set of activity performed within in boundary governed by law of that particular nation. Uh, Vipul, actually, you know, uh, there is a black economy. There's a black, uh, you know, market also, Vipul, that is not governed by law. So economy also constitute that piece. Yep. So economy is not something that is only governed by law, but also something that is governed outside the law. Okay, no worries, no worries. Good answers, good attempts. Okay, let's discuss this. So, see, when we talk about economy now, we talk about economy in context of a country. Okay, we are not talking about global economy. We are right now talking about economy in context of a country. And I hope you remember the word micro, macro. So, it's kind of a, you know, medium macro. It's not a very broad macro at a global level. This is a macro at country level. Okay, so macro economy. So what macro economy states, like a country can have, you know, resources. A country can have resources like oil, basically soil. Soil means basically land, basically certain uh, goods that we consume on day-to-day -day basis. We have lands, we have, you know, oil, we have, you know, transportation system, we have, you know, uh, aviation system. So these are the resources of economy. Okay, so how these resources are utilized are basically consist the part of the economy. Now, when we talk about economy, so there are three to four questions that is generally asked in an economy. Like when we decide a country's economy, the country's economy policy basically revolves around a couple of questions. Like how the society is going to finance itself. Okay, like whether society is going to be, you know, uh, basically, def uh, uh, how do we say, physical deficit, whether society would have a physical deficit or, you know, I just don't recall the number. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, just forget about it. So basically, how society is going to finance itself, what it's going to produce, basically, out of the all resources. Let's say, recently, India has found a lithium ion battery, you know, uh, a mine of lithium ion battery. So what is going to do with those iron uh, minerals, whether it's going to produce batteries out of it, whether it's going to utilize those ions and, you know, use it into a different production. So what we are going to produce, that is a question that economy needs to, you know, answer. Let's say we have oil. So whether we are going to use that oil, in, you know, transporting, using into the, you know, car and basically using as a fossil fuel or we are going to use that oil you know uh, helping running the factories production generators what kind of task we are going to do from a certain good that a economy has what kind of you know action we are going to do with that uh, resources it's basically economy has to answer what to produce how to produce like whether it would be labor intensive capital intensive and for whom to produce, whether it would be for the society as a whole, whether it would be for the corporate business itself, that would further, you know, produce the goods for, you know, uh, for the domestic market, or whether, whether we would produce the goods for the, you know, international market. Like if I give you example of Tesla company, Tesla company does not only, you know, manufacture the car, Tesla cars for their own country, USA, but also, you know, export these cars for the, uh, for the outside world. Okay. So the overall question, basically overall understanding of the economy is for the country that we have resources and we will be producing them. Now, what would we will be produced, how we will produce and for whom we will produce, that will be the questions around those resources. I hope this much is clear. Okay, I hope this much is, this much is clear about resources and what and how and for whom to produce. Okay, now there are three categories of economy. One is called planned economy, one is called market economy, and one is called mixed economy. Very important for your understanding of law. This much, this much, like what is, you know, economy is something that we know. What is planned economy? A 
planned economy is uh, basically is a we can call a country as a planned economy where decisions of what to produce how to produce and for whom to produce is made by the government okay and majority of the wealth majority of the wealth is owned by the government okay so what does it mean so if if okay anirudh has you know given one answer which is very close which is very close and it's a uh, okay answer uh, government controls and okay students have already started answer okay okay just tell me what do you think when you, when i say you know any government is making decision because i was not expecting you to give answer too early okay let's see so if government is deciding you know what would be produced and how would be produced what do you call that kind of government like anirudh has given one example but the answer is not very directly applicable but yeah i understand his intention not every government owns and control the economy kritika how much government control will define whether it's a planned economy or market economy even in market economy government control certain resources very good shabash very good i i hope i understand your intention what was your intention uma just not the right word so shabash has given socialist socialist economy a socialist economy you know before liberalization before globalization in 1991 in india the indian economy was a socialist economy where resources were controlled by the government there was you know very less very less private ownership and you know planned economy where where it happens in case of you know communist government or socialist government those who don't know what these are these governments are set basically a kind of government where you know they decide okay what would be produced private players like you know if you talk about coca cola pepsi these are private players tesla private player reliance private player they don't play much role in these cases you know they don't have you know much to produce they have to take approval from the government and if government doesn't approve them so they can't do any business so in a planned economy business as such is done by the government itself not by the businesses business corporation they don't exist there or basically they if they exist they they exist you no know, very little businesses most of them is done by the government let's say we are right now using a computer you are using a mobile phone that would be produced by a government in a planned economy okay north korea nationalize of private assets nationalization of private assets and 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 this is also done in case of dictatorship dictatorship anybody who doesn't know what is dictatorship where you dictate the economy or you dictate the society why do you know why dictatorship is called i i hope you understand what dictatorship is dictatorship is somebody is you know controlling the country yep like mr jingping from north korea i hope we all know about this okay mr jingping from north korea so he is a dictator why because what he dictates will be the law it's not the law it's not the law of the country that will guide him it's his words that will you know guide the country so whatever he dictates dictation means is somebody is dictating somebody is telling you something and you are writing it down so that is dictating so dictatorship is that somebody dictates how basically we will be conducting adolf hitler good example arya adolf hitler we i hope we all know like from italy it was mussolini and from you know uh, germany it was adolf hitler so in plan not not only in dictatorship but only also in socialist country and also in the uh, the uh, the communist country this this happened the planned economy the planned economy happens so where government is you know uh, controlling the resources and the private players have no much play. why you know anirudh has given the answer of china but i was not completely you know uh, agreeing with this answer why because in china there are private players there are private players and that's what we would understand the difference between planned and mixed economy so a communist economy or a socialist uh, sorry a communist country or a socialist country can be a mixed 
economy depending upon what percentage government holds if the government percentage is higher definitely it's a planned economy if government control of resources is lesser then it's a mixed economy and if it's very less like government does not own anything it's a free market it's called a market economy in market economy government have no control over resources you know one good example comes in my mind when we talk about indian railway like how many of you know like whether indian railway is owned by government or not like can anyone tell me let's see let's let's check your gq and iictc is of a government organization or private organization people yep so railway is a government owned asset government owned asset but you know there is recent talks of the government that they want to you know make it uh, privatized what does it mean that the government wants to sell the stake of iictc and make it privatized for you know uh, the private players and so that they you know run this railways themselves so that it becomes you know uh, more effective most cost efficient for the people as well as you know uh, like like let me give you example of uh, telecommunication telecommunication used to be you know done by bsnl in india but now it's reliance and airtel those who don't know these are telecommunication provider in india and they are the private players the reliance and the airtel the reliance jio and the airtel are the private players so in broadband industry government regulates it you know who they are going to give the licenses but majorly these bands are owned by the private players okay so where in an economy where government has you know very less or zero control over the resources that economy is called a market economy okay so here mostly it would be a democratic country a democratic country where you know government is you know uh, chosen by the people not by a dictator not by a socialist government but by people of the country they choose the government there will be multiple parties there will be contesting against each other and one of the party will win and that party that that party will become the government of that country for a particular term and that basically government you know um, uh sell all the assets of the country to the private place so that they can run the country better yeah 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 i i'm just coming to that now the questions start coming and that's a very good thing that you start asking these questions what about like what is the econ what kind of economy uk runs what kind of economy russia runs so to answer that just tell me what is the percentage of resources of that country government owns okay guys tell me is there any private is there any private company in russia or basically china or uk or usa or india tell me yes or no is there any country where there is no private player or there are only private players is there any country out of these like all the public resources are owned by the government none is allowed to the you know uh, to any private player or all resources are available to the private uh, players and none is owned by the government so is there any country okay so so you got your answer so yeah <laughs> jatin actually a very good answer jatin very good answer so currently these are these are mixed economy now in mixed economy there can be three three versions one is basically you know uh, government basically government owns major of the resources and some resources are to the you know uh, private place government you know holds 50 50 50 resources and last is where you know majorly 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 by private players like us economy like you know some of the resources like defense or sometimes transportation like in india we have you know transportation system still regulated by the government we have you know uh, the defense sector still regulated by the you know government because because of the security issue for transportation as well we don't want to you know hamper the security okay so these are the certain things which government feel that we cannot be privatized just for the sake of cost 
okay just for the sake of cost we cannot privatize them we have to also consider other social factors let's say hospitals hospital has a mixed baggage they can be government hospitals as well as private hospitals because government doesn't want to you know 100% privatize the uh, hospital sector because they know that they are poor people who cannot pay for the cost so they have opened the you know uh, government hospitals so this kind of approach where you know both both government and the private players play a role in functioning the society in owning the resources to contribute back to the society that kind of economy is called mixed economy okay there would be consumerism there would be you know demand and supply role in this case in market what i you know uh, just you know you can see that there is a price mechanism demand and supply in mixed economy also there is a demand and supply just that let's say oil prices oil prices does not only function on demand and supply but they also you know work on government taxes clear so government also has some role in playing you know what would be the you know price of a particular good how much that good would be you know produced let's say government want to you know uh, um, basically uh, just discourage the production of any particular good let's say there is a, you know higher consumption of water and government want to discourage the higher usage of water so it can you know in, uh, provide so many taxes and duties on particular manufacturing of good so that company would be discouraged so they have to find an alternative to that so in a mixed economy government try to balance the act balance the act and they would be you know certain influence of private players certain influence of private players and certain influence of government and certain influence of you know public please understand you have to have a clarity like in which economy which kind of people have what kind of powers and this is the purpose of understanding the system in economy system we have plan economy in market system or uh, plan, plan economy we have people you know government controlling everything in market economy it would be the private players who would be running the market based on the demand of the consumer and in mixed economy it would be you know mix of government and private players clear everyone so far any doubt Arya says yes. Anirudh says clear. Kritika says clear. Vipul. Oma says clear. Jatin. Ashna says clear. Okay. 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 Let's move. Now, we have understood the economy. We have understood the economy. Let's understand the political system. when i was discussing the economy na i was intentionally telling you okay there is a communist government there is a socialist government there is you know uh, uh, the dictatorship there is democracy can you tell me what is democracy and what is you know uh, dictatorship just give me a quick definition what do you understand how would you describe in words a democracy and basically the uh, dictatorship and we'll also discuss the uk case uk case is actually very unique actually it's a very old system one of the oldest system and because of the obvious reasons that uk the united kingdom was previously a british empire which had you know colonial system like they had the empire they have exported you know uh, their uh, imperialism to throughout the world okay Jatin says democracy is for the people by the people good definition of democracy good jatin when people are free to choose their leader on their own very good sabaj that's a very good definition when people are free to choose their leader on their own okay please keep pouring the answers
when people have the right to vote their representative yep 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 good point arya basically people elect or choose their leader by voting good point and what about dictatorship so far i have got the answers for the democracy where there is a freedom of speech that's actually very debatable <laughs> people <laughs> though we can say in theory yeah there is a freedom of speech yep that's actually very debatable even in you know democratic uh, and, and it's a good faith it's in, it's in good faith freedom of speech is you know even countries that have democracy are you know uh, have certain restrictions on freedom of speech like you cannot speak against the country you live in and that is very important okay so there are certain restrictions but i hope i get your point like what you mean by freedom of speech dictatorship is no freedom to choose the leader okay i hope you got my point when i say you know what is the restrictions like the let's say we talk about india so constitution gives us the right but constitution gives also gives us the responsibilities okay in dictatorship power is in one hand and people are given right to choose people are given right to choose not given okay okay people are not given the right to choose okay so when a person or group of people dominate the whole country alone irrespective of condition of country okay so i get your point i get your basically what what you understand about it so see you know the difference between a dictatorship and uh, and uh, the democracy is not only of leader you know why planned economy is you know mostly in dictatorship why planned economy planned economy dictatorship is just opposite of democracy very good shweta and what is democracy shweta <laughs> nice definition <laughs> dictatorship is just opposite of democracy <laughs> okay what is democracy <laughs> okay okay Let, let's let's understand though i understand you you know this okay so see in planned economy like we were discussing planned economy there was you know dictatorship you know what does it mean it means that in you know whenever there is a dictatorship it drives a planned economy and what it means is that choices not only of leader a personal life okay what kind of clothes you would wear who would you marry basically what school you would go what you will be learning even these things okay what religion you will follow even these things are controlled by the government or basically let's say dictator so when somebody has has you know infiltrated your privacy has infiltrated your privacy and dictating what you are supposed to do in, even in your private life so that is dictatorship because let's say let's let's just think about it if let's say we are you know told what to do so even uh, democratic uh, government also tells us what to do okay what not to do at least how not basically not to commit crimes okay be a good citizen of the country so this is even go democratic government uh, tells us the difference between dictatorship the difference between autocratic government and the democratic government is that that they infiltrates in your privacy they make you you know they ask your private basically your personal choices are not your basically your free will and when there is a free will when there is a free will for private choices this is basically your democracy democracy does not mean that you do whatever you want you do need to follow public rules okay you do need to be you know following the rules you are supposed you are not you know you law will tell you what not to do okay law will mostly tell you what not to do it doesn't tell you what to do but it mostly tells you what not to do okay even in the democratic country you are supposed to follow the law but the the difference is that what kind of you know uh, what kind of personal lifestyle you will have that is not dictated by the you know the system okay so these two things are clear okay the difference now 
we have you know understood like this is this is just for the reading purpose let's just complete the reading and then we'll discuss like how why i have discussed this economy and you know even why this is given in your case because they can be one mark question okay how the economy how basically you know political system economic system and you know the legal system interact and this will help you in dictatorship government can lead to human rights abuse and lack of political freedom well you know why uh, even in dictatorship please understand even in democracy sorry they can be you know abuse of uh, human rights they can be abuse of human rights due to corruption due to you know violation of laws okay it's just that dictators are more likely to you know uh, abuse your human rights okay most likely to abuse your human rights is most likely to happen but not compulsory let's say dictators tell you to how to you know what kind of uh, lifestyle you will wear it's not like they would you know prevent you from living okay maybe they would give you you know uh, certain rights certain fundamental human rights but they would you know abstain you from certain uh, other rights so it can be can be can be you know this is a very debatable point like whether human rights would be abused because we have to first define what human rights we are talking about okay but the idea is same idea is same so let's let's first read this let's first read this politics refers to how countries are managed how countries are managed okay though your understanding is clear apurva i was just you know giving you further clarity you you are on right on just i was giving you further point okay mm -hmm. please get hmm. okay so political refer politics refers to countries and how countries are managed how country might be run by a dictator okay political system of dictator and individual freedom might be heavily regulated so individual freedom in contrast country might be run by elected body political system democracy and individual may be more free to regulate their own lives still being subject to overall body of law okay so you are still being regulated by law it's just that you have your individual freedom as a human you will have certain rights and you are free to do within the bounds of those rights but you are still subject to laws okay hence law making can be democratic process where law is developed by the citizens okay or more of a dictatorial where law is developed by government basically you know let's say military coup how many of you know what is military coup i actually i got surprised like student didn't know this but is there anyone who doesn't know what military coup is this is not coup this is coup it is read as coup uh somebody is okay no don't worry don't worry so you know uh, uh, should i say this example okay how many of you okay uh i don't know whether i should say this uh let's take let's assume a country let's assume a country i'll not take the name you just assume yourself okay i cannot take the name let's assume a country who is controlled by their military who is controlled by their military so can you can anyone tell me name of just i'll not name it but hmm 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 so so okay 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 so you got the point okay 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 so 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 what happens in military coup let's say there is a government elected by people elected by people like i i can i, I just remember one name mussolin 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 and hitler what happened there there was a government elected by the people there was a democratic government that was elected by the people okay what happened their military their military actually you know throw the government they abolished the parliament that was running the country and you know they appointed their own individual so military coup is when military of your own country you know just throw out the government and they start running the country that is called military coup okay military overpowering the you know government okay all the decision will be taken by the government so we might know a country in current situation though there are many countries but i hope you might know a country which you know uh, is is believed that's not sure that's not confirmed that's not official but is believed that they are run in shadow by the military okay so 
Germany in those World War times, or basically Italy also, were believed to be, you know, uh, they not believed. They these are established facts that they were, you know, uh, they were military coups. Even in Vietnam and basically in many many countries, uh, this military coup has happened, and sadly, even today, this military coup happens. So, clear? What is military coup? It's an international exam, so I cannot take names. You know, it it might offend somebody, so that's not appropriate. <laughs> right, right, Jatin. Yeah, yeah, but but you know, when one if it's established, if it's established, if it's recognized by the international organization, currently it's it's debatable. Currently it's debatable, so that's why we cannot you know say this. At least as a, as a professional, I should not say this. Okay, so these these are the these are the political system, economy system. I hope we are clear. Now, please understand what kind of government, what kind of law, sorry, what kind of legal system a country will have will depend upon the economic system it wants to run. It wants to run. Economic system wants to run based on its political system so can i say legal system is basically you know uh, the political system the kind of political system you would have would would basically would basically define what kind of economy you want and what kind of economy you want, you would basically decide what kind of legal system you would have. Is the hierarchy clear? Let's say you have a democratic country. You are in a democratic country like India. Okay, like you are in India. So you would want to have, you know, a very uh, mostly a mixed market where mostly most resources are owned by you know private players okay and some uh, social social uh, so, so, social benefit services like you know hospitals or let's say you know defense these are controlled by the government rest rest is basically owned by the private and then that basically creates a, a legal system of you know globalization liberalization there's you know less licensing easy to start up make in india start uh, basically kind of ideas that you know could generate let's say if it's a dictatorship let's say if it's a dictatorship kind of political system then you most likely to have a closed economy you don't want to you know have a economy which is you know interacting with globally and for that you would be having lot of laws and regulations lot of laws and regulation that you know prevent export import okay that would prevent basically you basically getting into the businesses so legal system, legal system would heavily depend on political system and the economy environment. Is these points clear? Is this clear? Any doubt? Please read this and let me know if you don't understand anything. I hope the idea is clear. The hierarchy, how political system, basically, you know, whether democratic or dictatorship leads to an economy, whether planned, market or mixed. And then basically it leads to a legal system. Okay, I hope those who are in India or those who have, you know, done their commerce. So they have read the chapter in economy about 1991 reforms done by Mr. Dr. Manmohan and uh, Nasima Rao basically introducing globalization do you know that in india coca cola was banned from 1960 to 1991 coca cola was banned like coca cola company was you know uh, was not allowed to do business in india from 1960 to 1991 and after 1991 and you know many companies like india have a very high it job sector india service sector india is number 1 in service sector i hope you know that 
and because of the IT services. And that was done because of the liberalization and globalization 1991. Right? So we have a open economy and a mixed kind of economy where we, you know, government owns uh, very less resources and more basically uh, private resources. And future seems uh, like we are going to move towards more into private players. And that is going to be, you know, a very good thing for the overall economy. Okay. And if you want to, let's say, if you want to facilitate that kind of uh, if you want to facilitate that kind of uh, economy, so you have to make your laws more uh, favorable to the corporates so that they can easily do the business. That is basically the idea behind the ease of doing business. Okay, less basically less difficult laws basically make it easier for the business to run businesses. Okay, less administration tasks, less cost because you develop a law and basically that companies are required to follow. So that requires a lot of cost. That's not easy thing to do. The, the government and the company and the society, everybody, you know, pays a cost to operate a law. It's not an easy thing that you just write a law and just make it effective. Okay. So the idea about economy and political system to legal system is clear. Let's now understand the legal system. Let's now understand the legal system. So what is legal system? So that's something very uh, personal uh, thing, uh, Whipple. That's something that, you know, we cannot, this, this is something a very opinion based thing, whether it's a good thing or bad thing. And, you know, as a teacher, let me tell you, it's very early for you to, you know, create any kind of idea. It's very early for you to create any kind of idea because Whichever side you take, whichever side you take, because, you know, it's it's very easy for, you know, a common people like us to, you know, differentiate and, you know, take a side. I would say, be vigilant of both sides. Try to see the correct points of both sides and try to, you know, take the decision of that as you will be the, you are the citizen and you are going to vote. So you have to understand, okay, how you are going to vote and what are your rationals of Voting. So that should be clear, not because you like only one side and you don't want to listen to other side or you don't like other side and you don't want to, you know, listen to your side's laws. So these you have to understand. And that is, you know, my recommendation be specific, be, you know, um, focus on, you know, what is uh, what seems right to you. OK, and then basically accordingly decide. It's a very subjective thing. So something to discuss some some other time. OK. So let's discuss this. Law is a body of rules that enable society to operate. That much we know that law is something that helps, you know, run the society. Please understand we are talking about society, not economy. Econ economy is part of the society. Okay. So it helps run the society. It does not have to be written down. It can be verbal. Okay, normally, 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 we write down the laws. Okay, and whether law is codified, or it's basically based on general understanding that will define whether it's a common law or it's a civil law that we will discuss. Many states, when we talk about states now, in India, we have a habit of saying states to, you know, uh, we, we have, you know, like 29 states right now. Okay, 20, 29 states, some uh, territories, right, in India. So we call them states. But but when we talk about, you know, uh, legal system, when we say states, it's nation. So specifically for, the, you know, our Indian students, that I have written this, that state means here nations. United States of America. United States is basically a nation of 50 states. Okay, so we call this as a USA. When we talk about UK, if we call it state, so we are talking about UK state, UK as a nation. We talk about India, so India as a state, basically India nation. Okay, so here state means nation, in case anybody had any confusion. So many states, or basically nation, have written constitution. Like we have constitution of India. Okay, constitution of India. Okay. Uh, USA also has their constitution, but surprisingly, surprisingly, UK till date does not have codified their constitution. How many of you don't uh, didn't know that? 
that UK currently, it's not like they, there's no constitution. There is a constitution, but it's not codified yet. Is the practice and customs. No written constitution. Right point idea. There is no written constitution. Okay. So this constitution is basically the ultimate law. The law that gives the right. Like, you know, when uh, US got independence, so their people have, you know, uh, 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 basically written their constitution and called it Declaration of Independence. They, they have written the constitution and that uh, constitution was called as Declaration of Independence. I'm not sure how many of you have watched the you know, Nicolas Cage movie of Declaration of Independence. So the movie revolves around that. And uh, in India, we have Constitution of India. So that constitution basically outlines what are the rights of the citizens and basically who will be the, you know, uh, what would be the national body and what would be the rules. No, if you have a written constitution, now if you have a written constitution, nobody can make law above the constitution. Okay, tomorrow you cannot make a law that constitution is invalid. Okay, you can make changes to the constitution that is allowed, but you can never void the constitution. Okay, as long as the government is intact, as long as government is not dissolved, the constitution will always exist. Okay, so constitution is the ultimate authority. That gives the power to the citizens of the country. Okay. This is known as positive law. Okay. Just a term given in the book. Like there's a negative law. There's a positive law. But you don't need to go into that. So this was given in your book. So I have added it here. Okay. A legal system in country embodies both laws of the country. And mechanics the country has place for regulating and enforcing those laws. So what would be the law? Let's say we talk about traffic law. I'm not sure how many of you follow the traffic law rules or basically has observed how many of you, you know, follow the traffic rules. But I think after, you know, the automation is coming recently in their traffic rules, people have started, you know, uh, uh, have started with following the rules very strictly recently. That, that's a good thing because of the technology. <laughs> so we let's say we create a traffic rule. Let's say if somebody gets into accident or let's say if somebody is, you know, uh, going through a road. So that is the law that we make. Now, what would be the mechanics? Like, you know, they would be what kind of body they would be, what kind of, you know, rules they would be. So that law will define. So this is basically the mechanics and this is the law of the country. Okay. Though it's a very, very bad example, but I hope you understand the idea. Okay. <laughs> and I hope if that is the case, you are not driving. Many people don't have their driving license and yet they still drive. Okay. So elements of legal system. What are the elements of legal system? The elements of a legal system is basically the law of the country, which is basically the constitution. Okay, the constitution. Constitution. The legislature. Can anyone tell me what is the legislature of India? What do you understand by legislature? Anyone? I know how you would be giving answer. What about rest? Those who don't know, Arya is about to give the uh, basically exam in uh, in this month only. She just uh, joined this class. Vipul says, "Who make the law? And who makes the law, Vipul? Can you tell me? Like in India, can you give me an example? Who makes the law? I'm not receiving answers. Am I audible?" Very good, people. Yeah, correct answer. What about rest? Guys, two students have given the answer. Guys, I've only received only two answers. Don't worry if you don't know, I'll tell. I'm here. But can you guess? At least try to guess. What is the legislature? The lawmaking body. Okay. Mm, okay. 
Okay, I I get what what why you said that answer, Ishika. Though answer is not correct, but uh, I get why why you said that, and I'll clarify. You are close. You are close, Ishika. There is a difference. There is a difference. I'll I'll explain. Very good, Uma. Actually, you have given the answer, uh, Uma, on the chat. You can basically you know give the answer in my personal chat. Now everybody reads it. It's Parliament in India. It's Parliament. See, see, guys. We are just going to, you know, we are just going to learn about three things. Do you know they are called three pillars or four pillars of a country? Three pillars or four pillars. How many of you heard this term that they are pillars of the country, pillar of, uh, you know, system? So one pillar is legislature, legislature. Okay, which is basically the parliament, the house, the house that creates law creates law let me write it with different pen house that creates law okay this is legislature second is basically executive executive are you know just for the purpose because we will discuss in detail are basically the ministers ministers or basically uh, in our india case because we will be discussing uk and usa also so in india we call them member of parliament mps ministers or basically uh, rajya sabha's mps the upper house the lower house parliament so these are legislature legislature is the parliament or basically the rajya sabha and executive executive are basically members okay and then there is judiciary 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 is courts so ishika once you said you know uh, supreme court so you were half right you said basically the the difference is judiciary are the courts like, like let's say supreme court they are not the one who make the law they are the one who interpret the law okay though 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 in common law we will learn how courts decision are basically law like like just you know i given you a glimpse of you know what is a common law court's decision court's decision so we will learn how court decision is a law we will learn how court decision is a law so when i talk about this legislature so legislature is basically one of the pillar then executive who are basically the members and we'll discuss then like, like what else are the members like executive who basically run the go, go, basically country and the government are called executives the entity that creates law the entity that creates law anytime a law needs to be you know created that entity who's creating the law is called the legislature the parliament in india okay and uh, then there is a judiciary judiciary is called the court let me just, you know, add one slide just for, you know, getting a clarity because I'm not receiving positive answers right now. So there is legislature. Please don't mind my writing and my spelling and uh, executives, executives. And then there is a judiciary for Indian context. For Indian context, we have parliament, okay, law making body. Executives are, let's say, MPs or ministers. And judiciary is the Supreme Court. Not only Supreme Court, but the rest of the court, but for the simply understanding, Supreme Court. Like all the courts, all courts. Okay, Supreme Court is the apex court, the biggest court in the India. Okay, so these are the three pillars of any democratic, like of any democratic country. These are called pillars of the democratic country. And can anyone tell me there's also a fourth pillar? There's also a fourth pillar. Though it is not, not part of the legal system, but in society, we call it a fourth pillar. No, police is part of the executive. I have not discussed uh, police. Police is part of the ad uh, let, just administrators. Your uh, basically, you know, officers like IS officer in India. They are part of executives. There is a fourth pillar. Can anyone tell me what is this fourth pillar? This something that you will learn. Basically, you know, you will hear in newses or in newspapers, or basically, if you are preparing for any civil exam, civil service exam, so you'll learn this. People, people is the fourth pillar. Ah, uh, then it would be they would be fifth pillar, Arya. They would be fifth pillar. 
okay so fourth pillar this, basically this is not an official term this is not an official term okay it's just something that is you know a kind of a saying that media news media news media is the fourth pillar okay 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 this is called the fourth pillar these are the four bodies that you know check on each other they check on each other we learn about dictatorship that one person can you know control the country one person can control the country we have we have created a system we have created a system where no individual entity sorry this not this one this is just for the sake of understanding this is just for the sake of understanding just for understanding okay we have created a system where no single entity has ultimate power no single entity has ultimate power no nope, not allowed each entity tries to keep a check keep a check on each other so that so that it does not become dictatorship okay you know the screen is not visible okay 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 is is it not visible guys ओके so i hope when we were discussing this when we were seeing this so it was visible this was visible na yeah okay okay so i was just making this chart i was just making this chart where i was basically discussing legislature executive and the uh, judiciary so so in the legislature we will have a parliament we will have a parliament we will have you know executive as minister not only ministers but also police who also the healthcare service provider all the you know employees who are you know part of the government are called executives but just for the sake of simplicity we call them ministers and, and then there is a judiciary so these basically keep a check do you know that in india parliament does not have the ultimate authority to make the law if let's say a law that is made by the parliament is not constitutional is not as per the is basically outside the bound of constitution then supreme court has the power to quash to remove that law and this has happened previously this has happened even in even in you know 2023 i think uh, indian government has introduced a law and that was quashed by the supreme court in 1960 there was you know bank banking act there was a one banking act that was introduced by the that time of government in india and because it was you know unconstitution as per the supreme court definition of you know uh, constitution so they caused this act even after passing getting it passed in the parliament so these bodies you know keep a check on each other self okay and this is a concept which is called separation of power because how do you define a democratic country not only you know choose that people elect their leader what if you know all leaders collide with collude among themselves and you know they decide to you know run the country according to their will and they would you know ignore people wishes they would say okay you elect us for one time and then we'll control all the resources and then we'll basically you know uh, make laws according to our wills so that's why we have legislature we have executives we have judiciary as separate entity and then why i call media as a you know fourth pillar why you know people say media as a fourth pillar because news media are the people basically they provide you news they provide people the news they make them aware about the current affairs that this is what government is doing and because of that these are also called fourth pillar is this clear about legislature executive judiciary we will yet we are yet to discuss like you know we will be discussing them about you know ta, like after this the let me just jump like what is elected legislature elected executive judiciary and you know how these are you know separated i will be taking example of united states india uk and basically you know there is something for you for your self reading but is this clear is this point clear 
Mm-hmm. I just jumped too much. <laughs> yep. Don't worry, my screen is not shared. Okay. Let me just create now. Let me know if it's visible. Do you want five minutes break? Or shall we continue? We have 30 minutes left with the class, but you want, we can have a five minutes break. Continue, continue. Okay, okay. So no worries, understand that, you know, in your exam, you have to sit two hours straight. So I would not recommend to, you know, take any uh, bio break or anything like that. Just continue. Okay, okay, continue. Okay, like every student is comfortable. Cool? Okay. Now about this. Judiciary. Basically the body that sits on the genuine dispute about laws will be discussing what, like what code does, you know, what kind of cases actually goes into the, you know, courts. We'll also discuss this, like what, uh, what kind of image you have about the court. We'll also clarify, like what kind of cases should go to the court. Okay. And there is, you know, a, uh, there's also a situation where, you know, court admits the cases first. It's not like you go to the court and you start fighting in the court. First, you have to prove to the court that your case is valid. So there's an admission of court. So we'll see the role of judiciary, the prosecution system. How many of you heard like in movies or, you know, anywhere about prosecution, about defendant? Okay. How many of you have heard, heard cases like state versus, you know, uh, dash dash name, let's say Mohit. I have no student Mohit name in this class. <laughs> so state versus Mohit or let's say Sunita versus Verma. Like these kind of cases, how many of you heard? So we'll learn like prosecution system just for your case of understanding prosecution system is basically a law governing the criminal cases. Okay. Okay. Like state versus Jolly, uh, like one person has named the movie state versus uh, Jolly. So this is actually we'll learn. The police, police is also an element of the uh, legal system that enforce the law prison system that helps you know people that you know helps with detaining the people who have broken the law okay uh, 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 uh. now there would be two types of two categories of law which we'll be discussing like criminal and civil law and international and national law okay so please understand the law that I was discussing earlier, the law that is applicable in India is not necessarily applicable in UK or basically not necessarily it is not applicable in UK. So when we talk about, you know, Indian laws, like, you know, uh, like any law that companies act in India, that is companies act 2013 right now applicable, let's say, you know, uh, rights, or let's say IPC. IPC Indian Penal Code for you know criminal law that is applicable only in India. You cannot you know impose that law on somebody who's living in UK. So the law uh, of the UK would be applicable to the country. So law is a basically international concept. Like every country apply law, whether dictator or whether you know democratic. Every country apply their law. But there is no such thing as global law. Even in 2023, we don't have a law which is called global law, which, you know, governs all the countries. No. Each country is sovereign. Each country, who are especially democratic, are called sovereign nation. Do you understand what sovereign nations is? Sovereign country, a country who is sovereign. Anyone? Like, let me just give you a hint. We celebrate on 15th August. We celebrate our sovereignty on 15th August. Very good answer, Vipal. In India, we celebrate our sovereignty on 15th August. In United States, it is celebrated on 4th July. And I don't think in, I think UK also celebrates Independence Day. 
anyone knows whether we uk celebrates independence day the uk was also uh, one time uh, you know ruled like british empire is very funny case because it has mostly rule every country so not sure whether uk celebrates the independence day <laughs> like i think they they celebrate the world wars to winning they they celebrate the winning of world war 2 not independence day yeah yeah us say celebrates have you not seen the independence day the 4 july 4 july the independence day it's a very good movie and uh, that is something that is something we will discuss with people that is something for history whether they won the world war okay so so sovereignty sovereignty means i hope you guessed it i hope you guessed it sovereignty means independence independence we are independent country we are independent india incredible india independent india so we are a sovereign country we decide what law is applicable to us what about united nation vishal what about you know international transactions what about you know uh, un where is that what about world trade organization what about you know all these countries coming together sitting together what about g20 are we not bound by that well as i said we are bound by those country only if only if we are ready we you know we decide to bound by them if we decide to you know keep our jurisdiction within them then only we are bound by them otherwise if we don't decide it we say okay we ignore you then it's up to us because we are sovereign country that's what sovereignty means okay do do this would have definitely repercussions if we let's say you know try to do anything like you know testing nuclear bombs on you let's say on uh, Uh, on in oceans okay not within our jurisdiction but outside our jurisdiction then this would definitely have some repercussions this would have you know some uh, issues like russia face these issues and you know uh, in is uh, uh, ukraine and russia war i hope you have you are aware about this and you know there are consequences in the israel and palestine conflict that is currently going on so there are you know uh, issues if you don't follow the uh, agreement 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 not law agreement of you know all the countries but you are free to do what you want to do if if we thought in theory we can say as a sovereign nation we have the liberty of what we want we can do we want to participate in a country's you know meeting we can we want to ignore it we can we are sovereign we act based on our own dis discretion based on our own understanding not because we are bound okay we are responsible and sincere country so whatever we commit we try to achieve that that is a different matter but this is our wish this is our uh, basically a sovereignty clear everyone so i hope you get it that there is no such global law whatever law we have is basically a national law whatever law is enforced by the constitution by you know acts these are constitutional act of a country okay so even dictatorship let's say north korea uh, minister mr jingping they decide to you know conquer any other country they are not even able to con conquer the south korea forget about any other part because their law does not you know enforces on the south korea because that is not their jurisdiction India is a member of World Trade Organization, which sets international rules for trade and commerce. Yes, definitely, Uma. Definitely, definitely, because India has agreed, agreed to you know participate in the World Trade Organization. I hope you understand that. The difference that I am trying to make. We definitely are part of United Nations. We are definitely part of the World Trade Organization. We'll also discuss ICC, International Commerce of Chamber. We'll also discuss, you know, UN uh, treaties, conventions. But my point is that we decide to participate in those, right? Okay. Do you see the subtle difference between the sovereignty and basically, you know, bound? Let's say a UK law. i will mean, let, let let me just give you a context let me just give you a context let's not you know just plainly discuss what is happening why it stops screen share every time okay let's discuss a context let's say let's let's take an example let's say 
this is something that i was going to discuss later on but let's say this there is a person of you know uk who you know enters into a contract in uk the law is that you will be under a contract verbally okay you will be uh, under a contract verbally okay or written in india we have a system that basically you can only be bound by a contract if it is written okay that's not actually the case but i am just giving you an example so let's say this person is basically you know uh, currently working in this uh, state and this person is a citizen of the uk this person is a citizen of india and this person you know is selling goods this person is selling goods what happens that this person from uk decides to buy this good okay what uh, and they basically agreed verbally <clears throat> verbally okay and they said okay they would conduct the transaction let's say today is let's say uh, month of december okay 2023 they decided that the goods this person would make uh, goods available by the month of january and this person would pay for the goods in the month of january 2024 in the new year okay what happens during this period this person actually finds somebody from us <coughs> who is ready to pay more for the same good okay this person have only this this many goods okay in case you you say okay why not to sell to both this person can only sell to one person okay so this person decides to go with us person why because according to the, his idea according to his idea it is that that he has not entered into a written co contract that this person has not entered into a written contract according to the a law that is applicable in his country correct so what when if he decides to you know move to a person who is from us and try to sell them because they are paying more prices so in his country he is not doing anything illegally and once let's say the january month comes and mr you know uh, a let's call this person mr a and this person as mr or let's call them mr ram and let's call this person as mr harry so when you know uh, mr harry does not receive the goods in the month of january so he's surprised and he basically says that you were bound by the contract with me he asked mr ram to sell the contract but according to mr ram he is not done anything wrong and he is not even incorrect according to the law of the india you are bound by the contract only if they are written so do you see the issue do you see the issue now if this person if this person tries to you know sue a case against this person if this person tries to sue so as per uk law definitely this person would be liable but as per indian law this person would not be liable got it point uma now now how to deal with this situation is basically our further chapters how to deal with this situation and this is where we will be discussing w world trade organization role of world trade organization role of icc role of united nations we'll be discussing you know uh, arbitral code i'll be you know giving you one case study i'll be basically discussing one case study of amazon and future retail how basically amazon you know uh, filed a case against reliance uh, reliance basically not uh, actually reliance the reliance was involved in that but uh, it was a you know uh, five it was in the market it was seen as reliance versus amazon it it was a very good study so are you clear like how the law how jurisdictions how you know national law basically you know affects the contracts the businesses clear everyone how we will solve this situation will come will come will come to how the, we will solve this situation but is the idea clear is the idea clear guys okay so there are two categories international law and national law okay international law and national law okay national law is basically based on the constitution international law basically we'll discuss is you know international law is nothing but an agreement agreement among countries among so let's say not sovereign because there is a certain a dispute about that so let's say countries 
because any country that is a part of UN. Okay, we'll discuss UN later. So countries have decided and basically agreed. So they have you know made the international law based on you know treaties, convention like you guys was mentioning the World Trade Organization or United Nations or let's say you know any international law. So there is international law, but you know it is not enforceable as such, or it is not exactly enforceable the way we can enforce it like we can easily capture somebody and you know throw them in jail but when it comes to international cases it becomes very difficult so the enforceability you know you can make any law but it's useless if it's not enforceable okay it's useless if it's not enforceable you cannot act you cannot punish on somebody so the law becomes ineffective because then why would anybody would follow that Okay, law basically works on this functionality that you can enforce it. There is an administration, there is anybody who is basically going to make people responsible. Got it? So, in international law, there are matters that have been discussed. There are matters that have been discussed, like, you know, formation, uh, formation and recognizing of state, like what would be the boundaries? Like, oh, okay, okay, sorry, this is, this is for boundaries. This is for boundaries and basically how basically what would be the boundary of a country like China right now attacking Taiwan or basically planning to attack Taiwan or uh, or basically, you know, uh, Israel planning to attack the Palestine, uh, Palestine, Gaza. So whether in future they would be, you know, acquiring these states or not, that will basically has been decided in the acquisition of territory. See, in the, in the international level now, you cannot define terrorism. You cannot define the terrorism. It's a sad reality. It's a sad world that we live in that we cannot define this terrorism in international world. Why? Because those who are those who are fighting, if they win, they will also form a nation. And nobody in the world, nobody in the world want to take responsibility of a nation. Nobody has this much you know, power. No matter, you know, no country, any country, you know, they, they can, they, you can dispute, okay, they run the government, but I would say that they run the government, if you, even if they do in shadows, but nobody can own a government, uh, nobody can own a country. It's a very hurricular task. So let's say if two countries, you know, uh, fight with each other and then recent, and then basically one country acquires another country. So that country may become the part of this country. And this is recognized by the, uh, recognized by the, you know, internationally. So a country can be formed and recognized. Okay. So this is also part of the international law. How, whether you would acquire the territory, though currently it is not allowed. It is not recommended. It is strongly, you know, discouraged to, you know, acquire any state like Russia, you know, acquiring the part of the Ukraine. So you can see the heat that Russia faced because of that. Okay, whether world, whether the, the the members of the UN actually succeeded in that, that is again a different issue. But you can see the heat that Russia faced because of that action. Okay, so what are the laws that are applicable in when you are in, into the war or into the you know acquiring a country and formation and recognizing of state, the law of the sea and space, treaties, uh, treatment of aliens. We we do have an international law for treating the aliens in case there is you know arrival of alien on the planet Earth. So we have an international law to deal with the aliens. Okay, what action we would take? We have a uh, basically international law for human rights, international crimes and international judiciary like you know FBI, CIA. These are some organizations that, you know, FBI is for USA and CIA is for, you know, international crimes. Though both are based in US, both are based in US, international crimes. So CIA basically works with FBI and also, you know, India, uh, uh, India investigation agency. What was the India investigation agency? I'm not able to recall it. Anyone? Raw, 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 raw. Okay. <clears throat> so we have international laws around it, but please understand, like, you know, 
Russia Ukraine war is a very classical example how no country is you know bound by it though definitely there will be repercussions there will be consequences but but no country is bound by it because you know what country has done how they have enforced the law just think about it they were not able to you know take the russia and you know take 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 them through the jail that that was not possible for them so there was no such enforcement if you know a country tries to you know go on their own path so they can go because they are sovereign nations and that is basically the the role of international international laws come why i am telling you this story na it's not like just a story for you this will help you understand the importance of you know international transitions i hope we are uh, clear with this like the example i have given i have example given mr harry and miss ram mr ram so i hope this is clear that how enforcing the law would be difficult for the country and how the international organizations you know uh, have come up with the solutions because see it's a globalized world it's a globalized world so what you do in you know whatever happens in usa affects most of the countries because usa is currently uh, whether we agree or not is currently the uh, dominating economic country one of the most dominating economic country right now on this planet okay there are other countries like china okay russia and we are also you know expecting like india is also playing a very good role like it's also emerging country as a developed country it's a uh, it's a very emerging economy right now so these countries decisions or basically any event or any action done by these country affect the world right so how these law will play into picture that is what we have to understand okay so category of law in based of national international i hope this is clear national international we are clear this is just an introduction chapter from further chapter definitely we will learn more okay clear guys okay rs says okay what about rest you guys are with me na it's not like i'm just teaching myself and rs says yes yep asha asha say yes shabha say yes okay okay good okay these were the treaties conventions general principle that i was you know referring conflict of law okay whenever a term conflict of law arises please understand it's not telling about two domestic laws is conflict of law in your syllabus is only means let's say uk law versus india law okay so when a matter is discussed when a matter is you know uh, dealt between two countries and they have you know their own law let's say the contract the contract act here we let's say say contract act so in contract act uk includes contracts of verbal in india they only include written law so you can see that there is a difference between these two laws and these difference cause conflict okay we have currently conflict between mr harry and mr ram how we would solve this conflict that is something we will discuss but this is a conflict right now among the law so conflict of law is basically different legal jurisdictions different states different states which have different legal jurisdictions interact and trade with each other and their respective legal rules conflict okay any contradiction among national legal system of country creates issues such as conflict of law this is where international law steps in like you know united like uh, are you already mentioned united nations central okay this is something that we will be learning later on it's a very important uh, piece of contract piece of uh, you know agreement piece of treaty actually this is a treaty which is basically agreed by the multiple nations do you know that we the most um, the fastest treaty that was you know agreed was ozone layer i'll i'll discuss this i'll discuss this nuclear bomb i'll discuss all this in you know upcoming uh, like when we will be discussing the united nation so we'll discuss these treaties these are some good treaties this is in your syllabus this is just for your understanding i'll discuss them okay model international law has been set up by international organization united nation to resolve conflicts among states and conflict between individual and different states so model international law 
basically set up by the United Nations. So this unicitral is basically uh, model international law, which we will discuss. Okay, last piece, last piece, and uh, after that we'll we'll close the class. So, in any country, in any country, law is basically divided into two parts: criminal law and civil law. Please understand when I talk about this civil law, it's not common law, common law and civil law. This is not that civil law. No, these are legal systems. These are legal systems. This is different. When I'm talking about criminal law and civil law, this is basically way, way, the way law is formed. The way a country handle cases for dispute or crime. Okay. So, Criminal law and civil law is different and common law and civil law is different. Okay. Common law and civil law, what I have explained so far, just one thing, just one thing. Common law is based on the decision of the court. Civil law is something that is codified. Okay. That is different thing. This is different thing. Student get confused and it's, you know, very difficult to explain them because the name of these two are same. Okay. When I'm talking about type of law of a country, of a country, it means criminal law and civil law. It basically deals with the cases and disputes. So let's discuss them. So law is made so that society functions. Society functions. Okay. Anyone who breaks the law. called criminal and that criminal must be punished okay that criminal must be punished so that society society as a whole basically this sets as an example for the society as a whole okay if you punish the criminal, so that sets the, you know, uh, a kind of an example for the society. And then people are discouraged to, you know, uh, breaking the law. Let's say we have introduced the fines for breaking the traffic rules. If you, you know, steal something from somebody. So that also makes you criminal. Not you, not you guys, not you guys. Let's say somebody, you know, some thief, some goon actually, you know, uh, steal some things from somebody. You know, they try to, you know, uh, harass somebody. So they are criminal because they are not following the law. They are breaking the law. What is the law? Law is that you would not harm anybody unless it is for your defense. Okay. So if you break those kind of laws, you become criminal. And criminal laws, criminal laws are basically dealt as a prosecution system. So now from today, you will be clear with any time you hear in the court, uh, the prosecution system. So anyone who has, you know, uh, seen the case of, you know, Johnny Depp and uh, what was the name of the lady? Johnny Depp versus um, uh, I knew, I knew, I knew, I knew, I knew, I knew. It's not like I didn't know the name. I was just checking like how many students were answering. You you did not even, you know, you, you, you did not even uh, took your time. Just instantly. <laughs> no, no, it's, it's okay. It's okay. It's fine. You, you should know about the current affairs. It's, it's not a bad thing. I was just teasing you. Okay. So... Okay, I didn't, I don't know. I don't know any other. <laughs> Though you, we we all we are supposed to know about you know what is happening in the society. We should know this. And this is a society which is not ours, but still we you know pay too much interest. <laughs> okay, so when a case like this is fought, so if you see the case, this case would be you know named this like this, because the 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 suit the suit or basically case was filed by Mr. Johnny Depp. So his name would be coming first. So the case would be Johnny Depp versus Amber Heard. 
and this would be coming as a civil case. Why? Why? Because in this case, both people have dispute with each other. Nobody actually, nobody actually, you know, uh, uh, basically broke on, broke any law. The, the case was for defamation. Defamation. Okay. That Amber Heard, Amber Heard actually, you know, defamed Johnny Depp. There is no any such law for, you know, uh, defaming the person, but they have done, but because of this defamation, but because of the defamation, Johnny Depp was actually losing so much money because he was, you know, cancel. He was getting cancelled contracts. He, whenever, whatever movie he has signed, he was, you know, withdrawn, whatever merchandise, whatever branding he had, he had lost that. So society was punishing him. So because of that, he, you know, filed a defamation case for whatever accusation Miss Amber Heard basically, you know, put against Mr. Johnny Depp. Okay. And then there's the trial go, gone into the public because it was a civil case. So it went into the public and basically it was discussed. And because it was a, you know, uh, uh, a case between celebrities. So definitely it was, you know, uh, telecasted on the, uh, on the, basically on the channels, but, it is a basically a civil case where basically two individuals fighting. Nobody has broken the law, but let's say, let's say it, there were certain revelations. There were certain revelations that Amber heard, uh, Miss Amber had actually, you know, heard Johnny Depp physically. So that in that case, Mr. Amber had might have, you know, uh, basically hurt, hurt the Mr. Johnny Depp's human rights. Okay. And if you break human rights laws, this basically makes you criminal law. So why I'm basically discussing this case, I'm basically, you know, want to tell you, had it been the case between Mr. Johnny Depp and Miss Amber Heard uh, that, you know, Miss Amber Heard has physically hurt uh, Johnny Depp or let's say, or let's say whatever accusation, whatever accusation Amber Heard has put over Johnny Depp. So in that case, if, if Miss Amber Heard have gone with, you know, uh, judiciary and, you know, filed a case, so that would come under the criminal case because, the case was, you know, acquisition was that uh, uh, Mr. Johnny Depp has, you know, uh, physically assaulted Miss Amber Heard. So had it been case of, you know, physical assault, physical assault, so that would be a part of criminal, criminal law. But because it was a dispute, it was a dispute and no laws were broken. Okay, no law was broken. So it became a case of civil law. And if, if, if this was a criminal case and this was a, because of physical assault, so the case would have been state versus Johnny Depp. Why? Because, because state is what state would represent the government in case of USA, it would be representing, uh, the USA in case of USA country, it would be representing, uh, the USA in India. We would be basically saying it as, uh, uh state versus, uh, let's say anybody who has, you know, harassed somebody. So Johnny Depp would be fighting in India. So still it would be state versus Johnny Depp because here state is the government that is fighting the case for, you know, criminal act and Johnny Depp would be the accused accused. Okay, let me just, you know, make it in a proper slide. So let's say if it's a case of state versus Johnny Depp. Johnny Depp. So what would happen here? State would, you know, appoint, appoint a basically lawyer who would call a prosecution. Who are prosecution? Prosecution are people who are responsible responsible for making guilty 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 punishment okay like jail sending them to jail so this is the responsibility of prosecution that anybody who's you know accused who's accused and if they are found guilty if they are found guilty so they should be punished they should be punished Okay, so this is the task of prosecution. And here, Mr. Jonita would be called defendant. I hope you understand this is the case where if, if it had been a case of physical assault, physical assault, okay, and uh, basically filed case by the Amber Heard. But actually what happened, Miss Amber Heard basically, you know, given the interview and she only accused, she never filed a case against Johnny Depp. 
So then Mr. Johnny Dad actually said these accusations are false. These accusations are false. So there was a dispute because until now, until now, until now, there was no, there was no law broken. Why? Because you can say that the they were accusation of physical assault because Miss Amber had never filed the case. Okay, Miss Amber had never filed the case of you know physical assault on Johnny Depp. So in this case, Mr. According in the eye of law, Mr. Johnny uh, Depp has never broke the law because he is not proven guilty right now. So in this case, what the dispute was basically between two parties, and this was this case was filed by Mr. Johnny Depp, and that's why this was called Johnny Depp versus Amber Heard. Is this clear, guys? We will all discuss some more nitty gritties, but I hope this is clear. Yes. Okay. Okay, we have you know exceeded the time, but I hope you get the understanding. Okay, there there is further things like you know how pros what is the burden of proof, what kind of proof would be you know acceptable. So this is something that we will discuss in the next class. But I hope you understand the concept. Okay. Just just for you know just I am not discussing just for telling, the burden of proof would be on the prosecution. Prosecution would be you know providing the proof that the person is guilty, and uh, you know in case of criminal it should be beyond reasonable doubt what is that we'll discuss in the next class and in case of civil case it is basically burden on the pro, uh, claimant like here also mr johnny dead here on the lawyer lawyer appointed by the government in criminal cases let's say somebody is harassed so that person does not you know appoint the case that person case you know is taken by the state or the government then government basically uh, fights on behalf of the uh, uh, basically victim and in case of civil, uh, in case of civil law, the person themselves fight the case. Okay, and the burden of proof is basically reasonable, reasonable balance of probability. So what these are, we will discuss in the next class. So this is it for today. I hope you understood it. I hope you liked it. Let me know in case you have any feedback. And that's it from my side. Any questions? Any questions, guys? Or we can. Wrap up. I hope you liked the like the class. I hope you you know you were able to understand the concepts. Any feedback like I, do I need to slow it down or do I need to fast up a little bit or you know I need to explain more examples? Let me know. Okay. Please do let me know in case you find anything difficult. So that way it will help me you know uh, improve the classes. Okay. Done. Okay, don't worry. These notes are for you. This is only for you. So I'll be sharing these notes with you. Uh, one is basically before the class and one is after the class because there's so much, you know, writing done. So I'll also share these notes for you. You want, you can continue with your own notes. You can basically write the notes with the class or you want, you can read with the book, learning hub, whichever way is fine for you. Okay, just be consistent. Okay, so shall we close the cup? Okay. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Good night. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.